Good morning, pop culture. We are live. It is Wednesday, December 12th, 2018. It's 7.50 a.m. and it's time to start Good Morning Pop Culture. So, usually I'm a minute or two late, but today's show has got me so riled up that I had to start on the dot. So for those out there thinking about joining, get us to 200 viewers right now because I am so ready to talk about this garbage. Pay attention to the title. It's no joke. There's some articles out there that are claiming exactly what the title says. So I find incredibly, never mind, fuck it. We'll be there in just a few moments. We'll have to wait. We'll play the waiting game. So good morning to everybody that's here already. It's going to be a hell of a show. I got my coffee back. I'm ready to get started. I had a decent night's rest, and I had a lot of fun on the High Council. So when you combine all of those things, you don't get Captain Planet. You get me ready to rant on Good Morning Pop Culture. So it's going to be a good one. So if you're working and lurking, turn the volume down just a bit because I might yell. If you're driving in the car, keep both hands on the wheels because I might make you laugh. And if you're at school, God, it's so early. I guess I'm used to college hours. Man, I roll in at about 11 o'clock, get done at 2 and then have the weekend off. You know, in college, I only went, my final semester, I only went to school Tuesdays and Thursdays from, I don't know, till about those hours, 11 to two, and it was great. Graduated, loved it. Cesaria Japan says, alert, epic Jeff rant imminent. First off, Cesaria Japan, thank you for your super chat. It's, I rant about stupidity. I guess I need to cover more stupid topics on this show because the more stupid things I get, the more angry I get and my blood pressure goes up. Thankfully, I take better care of myself so I can handle my blood pressure going up like that. I'm not going to keel over like that dude on the episode of King of the Hill. Jeff the Iron Wolf, thank you very much. Morning, Jeff. Completed 36th orbit around the sun. Well, then happy birthday, Jeff the Iron Wolf, and congratulations, my friend. Hope you had a nice birthday. Hope you didn't have to work or spend it on the road. You know, spend it at home with your family. It's funny, the older you get sometimes birthdays, like I said, the simplicity of it is the best part. Grand Inquisitor said, sorry for ruining the mood yesterday, Jeff. That's okay, I don't hold grudges, and I'm really not angry. The funny thing is, after that little rant about Patreon, we got a new patron at a high level. So thank you to our new patron. We'll uh, give you a shout-out properly on the podcast. Don't worry, we will. But, uh, you know, thank you very much. Uh, Salvador, thank you very much, man. These super chats are rolling in quick. Muff button me, muff button now. Me, muff button needing it. <laughs> Is that like an Assault always sunny reference? Charlie's mom when she has cancer. <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Uh, Salvador, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, folks, we got 84 viewers this early in three minutes. Let's hit that muff button, pound it, get it up to 85 likes. I'd give one myself. I'll do it at the end of the show. Also, Salvador, I got your message about the uh, P.O. box. So to avoid any problems, today is a training day. I usually get something to eat specific for lunch. I will go out there. I will grab it on the way to get lunch. That way I have no excuse. And it sounds like there's a lot of shit, so I might have to just uh, keep all of it in my trunk and then bring it in slowly into the house. Jaron Ricewick, thank you very much for your super chat. Jeff Rant, best way to start the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Some days it's just like, hey, Godzilla's trailer's out, and man, it's so important culturally. And then today it's like, hey, let's make up some bullshit science and fucking lie. I, I'm not, I, oh God, please, 103 people, join us instantly. We need you right now. Let's Thanos snap a million people in here, because this is the show that will make your week. Uh, We are shitting on the world of entertainment, specifically io9, a garbage website. But you know what? I'm going to wait. We're not going to talk about it. I got something I wanted to talk about first. The High Council last night. Fantastic show. If you guys enjoy The High Council and you haven't caught last night's, make sure you do. Because for every clone Jeremy, for every proper Jeremy, for for every Jeremy's hat, Jeremy's swig, all these things, there's finally been another alternate Jeff that I can get behind. Coconut Jeff. So if you guys do not know who or what Coconut Jeff is, let me uh, read you this tweet real quick. Quick, Excuse me, a super chat. So Coconut Jeff says, Growing up was hard. I was raised by Kiwi. The kids at school picked on me because I was different. My father used to hit me until he was beaten to death. Now I sit here at Whole Foods waiting to die. <laughs> so that is the ballad of 
<laughs> Coconut Jeff. I might actually put that on a t-shirt and sell it. <laughs> if you haven't had a chance, folks, uh, follow us on uh, Twitter for all kinds of fun stuff like this. And yeah, Coconut Jeff is now an incredible meme. I love it. I dig it. Uh, you guys bring so much fun to this channel, so much fun to my life. And now Coconut Jeff is a thing. So Coconut Jeff, if you're listening, thank you very much. I'm expecting all kinds of new alternate inanimate object Jeff accounts. So bring it on. Make me laugh. <laughs> I look forward to it. Next week, uh, the High Council's on my channel. So maybe we'll have, you know, if Jeremy has the Jer Army, maybe we'll have a small coterie of Jeffs or something like that. It could be fun. Who knows? But yeah, the High Council was great. We talked about episode nine. We talked about if there's anything to get us excited. And today's show, we actually have some episode nine news slash mark hamill discussion topics so our buddy mark aka jake skywalker because luke skywalker died in 1983 uh he's been talking about star wars he's been talking about the making of this shit and um it'll make for an entertaining segment here on the show Uh, for those out there, we're also talking about another Marvel Comics relaunch slash reboot. So just when you thought Marvel Comics were going to get their shit together with this Fantastic Four relaunch, when you thought they were going to get their shit together and stop with the renumberings, well, guess what? Eh, not going to happen. So be prepared for all kinds of stuff like that, too. While we wait, I also pulled up a topic and figured instead of having you guys sit around and wait and wait and wait and wait, I found something kind of funny to talk about just for a minute. Uh, I want to know what you guys think. So according to this article on Screen Rant, Fortnite and PUBG are banned in China. So it looks like these games might be taken off of the Chinese market. So that's great for nobody. But I don't know if anyone out there plays PUBG or Fortnite. But I don't like the idea of a game being taken away by your government, your ruling body. I would hate if the president said, hey, you can't play Smash Brothers. I'm like, dude, I'm really good at it with Samus. Like, I'm training for a tournament. Do, do not take that away from me. So um, the world of gaming is shit, but those games seem to not be broken. Seem, people seem to love them and play them all the time. But it looks like our our Chinese brethren and sister and other kin aren't going to get to play it for much longer. So... Fortnite, PUBG, looks like they might be taken out of China completely. Why can't they just ban Fallout 76 or any game produced by EA? It's so sad to think at one point in my life, let's take it back 16 years to 2002, I thought that EA Games was the best publisher in the world. Why? Because they made James Bond games. I was so focused on 007 stuff that anybody that gave it to me regularly became my favorite. So back in 2002, the new James Bond game was Nightfire. And Nightfire was damn good, and it really holds up well. So if you guys got a GameCube, Xbox, or PS2 line around your house, or a Wii, uh, get yourself a copy of Nightfire and play through it. It's not as good as GoldenEye, but it's not as bad as Bloodstone, Quantum of Solace, many other video games in general that come out today. So... EA Games is now a joke, and today I believe they're announcing or releasing the Obi-Wan Kenobi Clone Wars skin for Star Wars Battlefront 2. Press 1 if you play Battlefront 2. Press 2 if you've never owned it. Press 3 if you never will own it. You know what I'm going to do right now? I'm in the chat. I see you guys. I'm going to press 3. I will never own Star Wars Battlefront 2. Just It's not for me. It's not something that I want to uh, own. I don't have the time for it. Plus, it's not as good as Smash Brothers. All right, so the threes are rolling in. Pretty much a tire tread of threes, a couple of ones, mostly threes. You guys make me proud. The three army. It, it, I don't know. Here's the thing, too, about Star Wars. You would think, like, oh, you guys just aren't into it. Maybe there's a whole contingent of people who are buying it and loving it. But because we pay close attention to it, no, we know what's going on. And um, we will be talking more about Marvel and their wokeness. We'll be talking about Marvel and their relaunches in a moment. Because after a certain point, 
a company just doesn't want to keep losing money. After a certain point, a company just goes, enough is enough. Like, like Loki, I was watching the Avengers yesterday at the gym, the final battle. I watch it, I don't know, every two weeks. And the best, well, not the best part, but the most memorable part is when Loki goes, enough, you are all of you beneath me. And he freaks out. That is how I feel some of these companies are with their losses. When they're going into the red, you, I just imagine some CEOs like, enough. And Ike Perlmutter steps up and is like, this is what we're going to do. Now, I know we talked about it last night on the High Council, how they'll make more money on a Spider-Man t-shirt than they will any comic book in history. I get that. But why not make money everywhere? It takes very little effort. There are millions of passionate people that would work for Marvel for the same rate and make a better comic book. I mean, I have been priced out from Marvel thanks to the smashing success of stealing Solo, Captain's Parody. Which, by the way, here's a quick update for those out there. I received a giant crate in the mail full of your early bird certificates. I'm waiting on the envelopes, and as soon as I print out the labels, they're on their way to you. So again, thank you to everybody who backed Stealing Solo a Captain's Parody. You're going to enjoy your little early bird certificate. It's just a small little gift to get you guys pumped, to know that it's coming. I'm contacting the colorist again today to ship, ship out more pages. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and you guys are going to get that book. And I, it was funny. I looked back on the page the other day and I was like, man, this turned out really good. So I'm happy. I'm pumped. And we're past 200 viewers. So now let's start talking. So now this is no lie. This is no bullshit. This is a real article, but it comes from io9, who also does Kotaku. I think this is all Gawker Media. So you know it's a garbage fucking website. But let's talk about it right now, because for everyone that ever wants to attack the fandom menace and channels like this, we don't lie about science. We don't make up sensationalist bullshit for clicks. So Charles Pulliam, Pulliam Moore, here is your moment in the sun, you lying. Well, it's really not his fault, but the article, we'll talk about the original thing right here. So... IO9, we come from the future. I guess the future's female, but the future I see has IO9 down in flames. A new study reports that movies led by women earn more than those led by men. Hmm. Curious. This is also filed to women. What do we have under women? Movies, representation, Betchel Test, Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel, Birds of Play, Prey, Harley Quinn, Black Widow. Uh, in terms of what's most important to me, we'll put Black Widow at the top. She's awesome. To listen to the way that internet trolls go on about how women become the central characters of franchises like Star Wars have somehow ruined the movies, one might be tempted to entertain the idea that women are bad for business. Common sense would tell you that it isn't the case at all. And now there's statistical evidence to back it up. Ooh. According to a new study conducted by creative artist agency digital strategy firm Shift7, movies that feature female leads reliably perform better at the box office compared to those that don't meet those criteria. For the, stake, for the sake of the study, believe me, I'd rather have a stake right now, a uh, movie qualified as having women in the leading role if it passed the Betchel test, meaning that it had at least two female characters who talked to one another about something that wasn't a man. And that is where our problem lies right there. The study looked at a group of 350... Look, so, uh, the study looked at the 350 top-grossing movies released between 2014 and 2017 and broke down the movies down into five categories based on their overall budgets, ranging from under $10 million to over $100 million. Movies factored into the study included The Force Awakens, Jurassic World, The Last Jedi, Avengers Age of Ultron. You get the point. A great deal of the movies included in the study fall under the genre category because Hollywood as an industry and we as a culture are at a point where genre films aren't niche products for a small audience. They're mainstream products, and the more representative they are, the more people that are going to see them. Producer Liz Chase in one of the study's leads accurately pointed out the test is a low bar to clear, but also expressed her belief that spelling these sorts of things out in cold hard numbers is ultimately for the best. It's surprising how many movies don't clear the Betchel test. Understandably, movie studios think about the bottom line. So it's great to see a study. It's great to see a growing body of data that should make it easier for executives to make more inclusive decisions. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. This study's findings aren't in the least surprising or anyone who's actually bothered to pay attention to the fact that women, like men, love big budget silver screen spectacles populated with characters who are like them. But Hollywood has always been rather loath to take that very basic, valuable wisdom to heart. 
Perhaps now the data has been laid out plainly and a slate of even more superhero movies led by women are on the horizon. More studio success will finally stop dragging their feet and get with the times. And it's articles like this why fucking people don't buy into this garbage. The Betchel test is a piece of shit. We'll talk about that at a later date. Trust me, I've been working on something. But fuck this article and fuck io9. This, this whole study is skewed. It has a scientific bias against... It's just fucking wrong. Okay, it has to pass the Betchel test to be led by a female. No, it fucking doesn't. You know what passed the Betchel test? Avengers Infinity War. Who's the fucking lead? Robert Downey Jr., not Scarlett Johansson, not Zoe Saldana, not Elizabeth Olsen, not the chicks from Black Panther, Robert Downey Jr., Oh, but it's led by a woman because it passes some fictional fucking criteria that we made up to make this thing look better so we can push our agenda. But you know what? It's fucking wrong. That's not how it works. Let's look at other things that do and don't pass the Betchel test. You know what doesn't pass the Betchel test? The original Star Wars. There's one female character in it. You know what? It's considered one of the greatest movies of all time. It's hugely influential, and women all over the world love it. None of the original Star Wars films passed the test. But why do those movies stand the test of time? Why is it that Disney, as a company, has to go back to those because they make money? It's not just dudes, even though it's mostly dudes that like this shit. It's not just the dudes that like Star Wars. There's been female Star Wars fans for decades when these other new ones didn't pass the Betchel test. Do the prequels? I don't think so. Maybe episode one. Not episode two. Not episode three? Unless you count C-3PO as a woman. So no, this Betchel test garbage is so irrelevant. All it is is a qualifier to make a political point. Now, this place, this strategy firm, Shift7, I've never heard of them. I don't really know. Is it like Pew Research? Is it something that reputable? Let me Google that real quick and see how um, reputable they are. So Shift7, what are they? A digital experience agency special in strategic B2B solutions. Uh, let's see. Uh, do they have a Wikipedia page or do they have anything about it? No. They have a Glassdoor page. Let's see what people say about working for Shift7. So it's founded in 2002. It's a private company, so they don't have stock or shareholders to answer to. So they can post bullshit like this and it doesn't hurt them as a company. And uh, it has a 3.4 out of 5 rating. And let's see, if you want to grow your career, this is the place to be. So I'm guessing what Shift 7 is, is one of the, ever, anybody ever go to college? A good chunk of you have, I have. You get those emails, it's like, start your career now in digital sales, blah, blah, blah. And it's like a job that pays you $20,000 a year as your base salary. Possible, you know, I can make more money if I work my ass off. It's this kind of fucking website. So all they do is, where, where is this even located? Is this in California? This seems like it's located in California. No, it's in Virginia. Excuse me. So it's down in Virginia. It seems like the place just exists for crap like this. So I hope they also enjoy their moment in the sun. But realistically, you want to talk about the Betchel test and diversity and inclusiveness is what sells a movie. Try this shit with other non-established franchises and it won't work. You're, you're, you're taking something proven, guaranteed to make money, you slip something in and then you try to make a point about it. It's like, oh, Indiana Jones 6 covers the Betchel test. It's fucking Indiana Jones. The first three don't. That's why people are here, because it's a pre-established thing. And it doesn't always work too. What happened to Ghostbusters? What happened to Ocean's 8? What happens to all these other countless movies? You know, the all-female leads don't work. They don't make the money. They don't bring in the people. You'll have Girls' Night and that's about it. What happened to the other one, the other hangover ripoff with Kate McKinnon? And uh, was Mila Kunis in that one? What happened to Mila Kunis in that spy movie, The Spy Who Dated Me? Again, passes the Betchel test. Fucking flop that nobody talks about. Star Wars, Avengers, Jurassic World, all established things, all things that are part of popular culture. You could put me in a fucking snapping turtle in Jurassic World, and it's going to make $500 million. It's Jurassic World. It's Jurassic Park. People are attached to it. I don't understand how they can get away with this shit and, and act like it's an honest fucking article. You know, io9, Kotaku, Jezebel are all the worst fucking parts of the internet. 
They're biased. They're unreliable. They make up bullshit. You want to talk about internet trolls that are dragging their feet about how women have ruined Star Wars? One woman has ruined Star Wars, and her name is Kathleen Kennedy. Daisy Ridley, her character is garbage. Rose Tico, her character is garbage. You know who else's characters are garbage? All the dudes. All the robots. It's not just the women that are ruining Star Wars in the movie. It's everybody because they're all poorly conceived, poorly executed, poorly written, poorly designed, poorly just existing characters. They suck. Somebody out there, tell me, the main villain, Kylo Ren, he sucks too. Oh, it is a man, a white man. He's the fucking worst villain in Star Wars history. I'll take General Grievous, Count Dooku, everybody. Jango Fett's severed head has more personality than Kylo Ren. This is the kind of stuff that the culture war is built on. They want to fucking fire shots like that. We'll go nuclear. We'll throw it right back in their face. We'll tell you how the Vettel test is an arbitrary thing made up to pass some sort of fictional boundaries to make some people sleep better at night. Some weak dudes, some women out there that have an agenda to, well, we want to push this and forward this. You know what? That's great that you want little girls to feel empowered. Everybody does. Nobody wants to say, oh, no, honey, it's a man's world. You can't do it. We don't live in it. It's not 1965 anymore. But what it is, is it's the we have to make sure that the real world is the real world. We can't tell these people all these great lies. And then when a company invests, see, Disney and these other companies out there are big. They're not too big to fail. We've discussed companies that people once thought were too big to fail and no longer exist. But smaller places aren't going to take the chance. Now, if you're a, a truly female-led film, like Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, then you can put it on this list. That is a female-led film. Chris Pine, you may love him, you may hate him, but he wasn't really the lead. He's not really the lead in anything. He co-leads at best. I wouldn't call him a movie star. He's an actor who's well-known, but he's not a movie star. Gal Gadot is a movie star. She transcended the role. She became you know, this media darling. She really elevated Justice League. You know, she fits this made-up thing. Daisy Ridley doesn't. Uh, Jen Erso's actress, uh, Felicity Jones, didn't. And for every Avengers that you want to throw, again, who's the top bill? Who takes the most money home? It's Robert Downey Jr. Um, maybe The Rock's movie Skyscraper passes the Betchel test, which would make this list, but it's The Rock's movie. Rampage, Jumanji, The Rock is the star. Karen Gillan, you're a co-star, just like you are in Guardians of the Galaxy, and you're a very good actress, and you deserve to make the money you do because you're entertaining. But The Rock and Kevin Hart, and then Jack Black, and then you. It's, uh, it's The thing is, there are stars. There are male stars. There are definitely female stars. You put Julia Roberts in a movie 20 years ago, she's the lead. She makes her $20 million a picture. Today, the actresses are a little different because you got these people. They're, they're like you, you used to call it like mumblecore, uh, you know, that like joking shit, like the Jake Johnson um, lower end budgeted movies with your Aubrey Plaza's, like, like a modern day Brat Pack type of thing. You know, I guess Emma Stone would be one of the biggest female uh, leads right now in the world for just solely based on what she brings. She's in that new black comedy with Rachel Weiss and a couple other actresses. You know, that's a female led film. Again, um, what are we calling it? Um, Monster, Charlize Theron and uh, Patty Jenkins from what? Oh, one female led film, Oscar winning film passes this test. We don't know how much money it makes, but again, these things have existed, but this article is horseshit. This theory, this study is horseshit. They have to make up something, you know, it's not really a subjective thing about who's the lead of a film. It's clear. Like I said, we'll go back to Avengers. It's Robert Downey Jr. He is the goddamn lead. It's not even debatable. He is the movie. Love him or hate him, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is built on his back. That is why that man has made hundreds of millions of dollars based off their billions and billions of dollars at the box office. He is the rock that everything is built upon. That's why they put him in Spider-Man. You don't see Maria Hill or Scarlett Johansson popping up in Spider-Man to help build the universe and get people in. No, you see Robert Downey Jr., and it's not about a male or a female thing. It's an honesty thing. It's a don't make up this shit to push your agenda. That is why I get mad. I don't, I'm not one of those people that can't handle, well, this female led movie made a billion dollars at the box office. That's okay. That's fine. That doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me that crazy rich Asians made a bunch of money. I like Asian people just fine. It doesn't bother me that Black Panther made a bunch of movies at the box office, money at the box office. Black people are, well, shit. I don't hate myself. So what the fuck are they going to argue about? But when a movie isn't a movie anymore, when it's a political statement, when it's pushed down our throats, when it's used as ammo in the culture war, that's when I begin to have a problem. And that's when I begin to discuss it. 
in this very angry manner. So for all those out there that would hear this and want to laugh, oh, you're angry over an article. No, I'm angry over the bigger picture here because entertainment is in the fucking toilet. The world of entertainment is surrounded by remakes, reboots, reimagining, gender swaps, and shitty, shitty articles like this because like I tell you guys all the time, and you don't want to hear it when I talk about Marvel and Captain Marvel. People are like, well, just give it a chance to Marvel. No. Captain Marvel and these other films aren't about the films. They're about the narrative of the film. And that is why in 40 days post-Captain Marvel, no matter how much that movie sucks, everyone's focused on the Avengers. Honestly, Captain Marvel could just be snapped out of existence and no one would give a shit because everybody. That is why the Avengers trailer in 24 hours got 289 million views. 289 million. Captain Marvel, it got like 100 and something over like 20 channels over the, four, the first couple of days. Fine. It's not a flop of a trailer, but the Avengers is the main event. Led by Robert Downey Jr. And you know who else had a strong presence in that trailer? Scarlett Johansson. You know who else is one of the founding members of the Avengers? And I just keep calling her Scarlett Johansson. Black Widow. Black Widow is a founding member. She's got her action figures. She's in the games. She's equally represented. She's been there since Iron Man 2. And I've never heard a single person say, you know, the movie would be better without Black Widow. No. She's cool. There are certain elements where I'm like, her and Hawkeye really can't fight aliens because they're just two people with guns or a bow and arrow. So that kind of stuff are the criticisms that I see. But you know what? That's valid. That's part of the movie. I don't. I want when I watched Avengers yesterday to bookend it all together. When I watched Avengers Final Battle yesterday, I didn't once think to myself, "Man, Black Widow shouldn't be the one to close the hole. She's whatever." No, she's a super smart assassin. She plays Loki. She tricks him. She figures out all this stuff. She plays the old Russian dude at the beginning of the movie, and she. And the thing is, her character grows. It's funny, too. When they try to add depth to the female characters, you get the feminists online that wanted to bitch about Age of Ultron. Oh, they said because she was sterilized, she was a monster. No, idiots. No. Just because you can't read subtext and the subtlety of the scene when they try to make her character more, uh, just because you can't understand that she's a monster because of all the red in her ledger, it's a reference back to the first movie, uh, that's reflecting on you. They did the right thing with her. And every time they add in a new female Avenger, like Scarlet Witch, or they add in uh, the ladies from Wakanda, the fans aren't bitching because they're well, they're well developed, well crafted characters. But let's not act for a moment that people go to see this movie, Avengers, for um, Black Panther's sister and the lady, the head of security. She's in it. They're both in it. They're fine. But again, it's Robert Downey Jr. It's the big main event characters. And let's get that through our heads one final time, folks. One final time. This article, this theory, this study is dog shit. Flush it down the toilet. Put a fork in it. It's done. Pay it no mind. And then you know what? To throw up uh, another defense against criticism, no one's intimidated by the ladies. No one's intimidated by women. Nobody cares. We're at a point. We've reached a point as a society where it's like, oh, a woman leads a company. Okay, fine. This woman's your doctor. Okay, fine. Final comparison. I don't give a shit where I go. If I need medical treatment and the best doctor in the world's a woman and she's going to treat me, cool. I don't care. I don't want some dude out of uh, med school just because it's a dude. I'm so fed up with the garbage in this fucking world. Uh, let's see what you guys have to say. Uh, let's see. We'll roll back up. So, yeah, I've been going on a rant. I apologize. Oh, man. So, let's see. Okay, cool. 293 people are here. I don't know who paid off these shitty researchers. I don't know who um I don't know who funds this shit or who cares about this shit. So Coconut Jeff says, My pain and suffering is all too real. Please help. Oh goddamn, Coconut Jeff is here, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, Coconut Jeff. I'm gonna have you on the show one day just because you made me laugh so much. In an interview with Coconut Jeff, we'll do that on a live stream one day. Uh if you if you DM us on Twitter, I think our DMs are open to everybody. If you DM us on Twitter, uh, we'll talk. I'd like to have you on. You made me laugh so hard. So let's see. Our friend uh, was it Alpha Terra Nima pull, sent in a super chat. Thank you very much. All the NPC talk of oppression makes me feel like they actually want to be oppressed, so they can live out their YA novel protagonist fantasies. <laughs> It really, it is, look, there was a video game or there was something called the Oppression Olympics back during the Gamergate days because 
I, all this culture war stuff really came into our um, internet culture around Gamergate. So late 2014, it really became this, um, it just started to permeate. Or maybe in 2014, we put on those They Live sunglasses. Maybe we finally understood what was going on. I guess they want to look at these people. It comes down to being fucking lazy. These people want to be oppressed. I want I want attention. They want attention. They want very minimal work. So they were like, I'm oppressed. I can't be a doctor. I can't get a job in the medical field. It's like, where'd you go to school for? Philosophy? Well, well, yeah, you're not going to be a fucking medical doctor with a philosophy degree. But my dream is to be this great uh, Air Force pilot, this, that, and the other. Well, what are your test scores? I failed. Again, you want to be oppressed. You want to set these lofty goals. And you can't achieve them because you, as a person, are dog shit. You have failed. You are the lazy one. You are the problem in the equation, not society. Society is advanced. You know, people get a fair shake. I saw some bullshit article about, oh, uh, women can't start businesses in America. I'm like, they can't? A woman can't start a business in America. Okay. Well, I'm pretty sure that the, um, there's a, there's a, like a, one of those adult themed party places built out of town here that's big. It's like worldwide now. It's located here in Cincinnati. Pretty sure that was started by a lady and that makes millions and millions of dollars each year. But hey, anything to make you feel better about yourself and your lack. It's not my fault that you know uh, I have adult onset diabetes. It's because I ate 47 dozen donuts last year. Or some, you get what I'm saying? Like those types of things. Accountability is never an option anymore. People want to jump down the whole, it's everyone else but me. Look, society, look at the, the other generations before us got it, and we need to get it quickly because we're setting a very dangerous precedent, not just in entertainment, but in everything. Other cult, and it's just really an American thing and like a certain Western world thing, parts of Europe. But you get into Asia, they're like, no, this is stupid. We don't buy into this crap. We get, you know, the Chinese rightly reject this shit straight up that's why certain types of movies are a hit over there certain types of genres certain types of things they don't put up with that shit in other parts of the world it's an americanized problem you want to talk about oh i'm proud to be an american i want to rip on it all the problems are made up here like oh just just take your head out of your ass and move on and this article also doesn't talk about all the failures. A Wrinkle in Time was a failure. Oprah Winfrey can give out all the cars to the people in her audience, but she can't give Disney a box office hit. Now, I personally like Oprah. I look at her success as inspirational. I don't really want to dump on Oprah. And it's not out of fear. I'm never going to meet Oprah. She doesn't know I exist, nor do I care if she knows that I exist. But the thing about Oprah as a real person is she did it. She hustled. She got herself to a place. If everybody out there hustled, well, you'd get a little further in life. Believe me, there are a ton of distractions. There are things that keep you from being motivated. But if you can find yourself in the right community, like this community, I like I would I will I will give us credit here on this channel and the other guys in the high council. We always tell you guys, go out and make your own channels, get involved, and you got guys like Jeff the Iron Wolf and the Rookie Critic and Odin's Movies Blog and all these other channels that are picking up steam because you guys are just, you went out and you did it. It's all about going out and doing it. And I find it incredibly funny that, you know, maybe I'm on the other side of it. I did do it, and things are working out really well for me. But it's not because... I bitched online until, you know, some company sent me a special thing and said, oh, well, you're important to us and we don't want you to feel marginalized in this new era. You know, it's you're, you are the future and your children are the future. And all. I'm like, what the fuck? That kind of like every time a company does something like that, I make a list mentally and I go, I won't buy your product. Like, I don't know, Coca-Cola or Pepsi or they Pepsi had that stupid commercial. I'm like, I'm not buying Pepsi anymore. So they're, they hurt themselves in the long run. But take into account. Again, Mad Max Fury Road. What did they market that as? Mad Max Tom Hardy. If you would have made a movie called Furiosa, that wouldn't have made them much money. Now, in the case of that movie, I would say Charlize Theron is co-lead with Tom Hardy. If anything, she's the best character in the movie, but they marketed on Tom Hardy's back. Charlize Theron is very good. She's a great actress. She's beautiful. She's all these wonderful things. She's Kendo's favorite African-American. But that movie was built on a previously established brand. 
that is why I'll, they talk about genre this, genre that. Right now, genre entertainment is remakes, reboots, rehashes based on previous IPs. I can't think of something. To, uh, correct me in the chat, but what's the most recent um, original IP that's come out of Hollywood that or the genre entertainment that's not based on anything? Because even with that, A Wrinkle in Time is based on a book. You know, Hunger Games, all these things, these YA novels that you want to joke about, Alpha Terra Nima, those are all previously established properties. They are the, you know, they're something else. They're someone else's work. Hollywood didn't come up with it. You know, Beverly Hills Cop, one of my favorite movies, isn't based on a book or anything. It's just Beverly Hills Cop. Now, Die Hard is based off a book by Roderick Thorpe. Star Wars, not based on a book. Um, Back to the Future, a wholly original property. I think the world could use more Back to the Futures and less, uh, I don't know, Wrinkle in Times, less whatever. It, you know, you got to have something that stands on its own as quality. And just because you put a female lead and it doesn't give you bonus points, brownie points. Like apparently it does to the Shift 7 place. Who passes a bachelor test? It's so important. Is it, though? I'm going to make a video about the, the, the best films ever made, critically and commercially. And we'll see where the overlap. We'll do a Venn diagram, a bachelor test, non bachelor test. And... You will see how it turns out. We'll talk about that in the future. This is part of the culture war, folks. This is part of the culture war. You, me, everyone in between, we're involved with this. If you are into entertainment, you are part of the culture war. And the funny thing is, the, the there are like different sects of people, much like a war. You know, let's say there's World War, whatever, and you have Italians, Germans, Russians, whatever. You have your genre fans. You have your people that have their finger on the pulse. You have your normies, like my cousins, the, the women, or what I would consider the normies. They'll go see Avengers because it's the big movie. But the shit they watch at home is like, you know, reality shows or Teen Mom or Junior Chopped or stuff like that. You know, uh, all a lot of the women like that I know aren't watching tons and tons of genre stuff. They're watching whatever appeals to them, whatever's marketed to them. And let's be honest. Like, well, okay, here's something. I went to college for advertising. They taught us you market towards women. Women are the ones that consume this type of advertising. So you market towards the women in the household. You show them the viability of a product, the importance, the ease, how it'll make their lives better if they buy your product. You will market towards them. The male, look at stuff that's for men and how it's targeted. It's about image. You know, you, you see yourself in the, you know, oh, I'm a Ford truck man. I'm going up mountains and pulling a fucking uh, B-52 bomber down the highway or something. That is how those are things are marketed. But then you look at the stuff that's marketed towards females, and it's how, you know, like there's this new Marc Jacobs commercial about perfume or, you know, the, the certain types of things, what you want to be, the body type, this, that, and the other. You know, they got it down. The psychological stuff was down pat decades ago. Even in the 50s and 60s, they knew how to market to the housewife, the husband, the kids, this, that, and the other. Today, society wants to go against that, the proven success. They want to, I guess like we always say, they want to be the trendsetters. They want to be the people who are the ones that make the big changes. They want to think that they're on the right side of history, that they produce this life-changing content, and then they want to be able to take the praise for it. So Alpha Terranima, that was the longest super chat response ever so thank you very much but yeah they want to feel oppressed they want they, it, it unifies them oh we're all oppressed under one thing it's like quit bitching that your life is terrible and change it believe me it's so so easy to fucking change it uh let's see we had another super chat roll in from our friend uh, observer dude thank you very much if women really do get paid less than men why do men get hired why not just hire women because they'd be cheaper Ooh, that's a very valid point there observer dude but that's a story they wouldn't want to tell you. That's a story, well, then it goes one way or the other. You know what I'm saying? Um, they won't do these things. They just use these quantifiers, these qualifiers. Oh, or this, or that. This is a problem. That's a problem. All to complain, all to draw attention to themselves or a cause. It's, it's, um, it's a big problem. It's just a, uh, it's a big problem. And some of these things are made up problems. I don't know about you guys, but I don't feel like um, a lack of representation has ruined or made Star Wars better. It's a, uh, it's just a bad movie that we only complain about the characters. And the best part about all this stuff is every time one of these companies put, uh, uses the diversity shield, they only diminish 
the public's acceptance of female and minority characters. These characters are seen in a certain light because of The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. It's great that this article and this study wants to say, well, The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi were so impactful and have women leads and this and that. Yeah, but Rose Tico's a joke. Like, Ethan Van Skyver can love her and he can be her little ray of sun, no pun intended. But there's a reason why Rose Tico figures don't move. There's a reason why Rose Tico's a joke, a meme. She's a bad character. And then you want to say, well, it's because she's Asian that people dislike her. And then you guys, the people that make the products, really do a disservice to the Asian female characters. So uh, let's just remember, folks, that we're not the racists, we're not the sexists, we're not the bigots. We're a dissatisfied, dissatisfied fan base. They're the ones who make it about race. They're the ones who want to hide behind minorities. They're the ones that want to do it to make money. So if you're going to make money on a product, be like a Nintendo. Well, everybody likes Smash Brothers. Everybody has, um, you know, can have fun with that product. Don't be like a Disney or a Lucasfilm. Well, this is for women, and we don't really care about the male audience. Thank you, Kathleen Kennedy. Believe me, we we know we know what you say about us. We hear it. Believe me, we talk about it. I hope we hear. I hope you hear what we say about you. Um, and I hope you retire and live a very comfortable, safe life, and you never touch Star Wars again. Just just, just fuck off. <laughs> so uh, just a second here, trying to finally figure out how to get this coffee maker to work without blowing a fuse in the other other room. So just a moment, folks. Um, talk amongst yourselves. The topic, Han Solo's blaster. Which do you prefer, Empire or New Hopes? There we go. Now it's working. Um, people are very passionate about this topic. We've got a ton of people watching. I'm glad people are like screaming about this stuff. Mortal Engines. Oh, let's look at Mortal Engines for a moment. I, I don't know exactly what Mortal Engines is doing. But I don't think it's doing super, super well. Um, you know, for everyone that wants to say, like, okay, for the opposite side of the culture that wants to say, we well, hate stuff with women and this and that. I don't really have, you know, the argument I would say is that geek culture doesn't hate women. It's the most inclusive and the most diverse already. That's why Supergirl has a big TV show. I don't watch it. To be fair, I don't watch Arrow or Flash either. So it's not really about uh, not watching a female-led thing. I just don't watch anything. Now, here's an example. I watched Agent Carter every episode. Didn't watch a single episode of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I've seen all the Jessica Jones. It's, um, you know, it just depends on the property. So, right now, the Mortal Engines has a 7.5 out of 10 on IGN. I just picked this because I had an IGN tab open. And uh, the verdict is, the Mortal Engines may have come 15 years too late, as it feels like a blockbuster straight out of the early 2000s before the YA craze saturated the market and then petered out. In 2018, it feels too little too late, with a story populated with largely uninteresting characters that's been done so often that it now feels dull. What saves it from being just another YA franchise starter fiasco is the world building that leaves you wanting to know more, and the stunning visuals that man demand to be fully experienced on the big screen you can find. Uh, the biggest screen you can find, excuse me. So I don't know anything about Mortal Engines. I have no interest in it besides I saw the trailer and I was like, eh, no thanks. No, I don't know if it's going to be a hit or not. Probably not. Because YA stuff. I mean, remember the Twilight craze? Remember the Hunger Games craze? Remember this stuff? People want to say, oh, uh, superhero movies are forever. These things are forever. Those things are forever. Look it. Only thing forever is Batman's credit card. Those movies came and went, and they're now a joke. Even my cousins who were going to see these movies at midnight, you know, came and went, and they don't talk about them anymore. There was that one, Divergent, that was so poorly received that it moved to the TV series, and then it never got made or something like that. Uh, people do lose interest in these things. And pushing agendas is how you uh, speed up, or you bring closer to the shelf life. <clears throat> I feel bad for anybody who genuinely has a great idea that's going to come out soon in the future, and then it gets plagued down by this, or bogged down by this crap, and then you're stuck with great stuff that just can't move. I feel sorry for you. Let's see. What about John Wick? What are we talking about? I'm sorry. I'm looking at the chat. I don't see that. 
Uh, Tim Riggs. Th- oh, wait, hold on. We had a couple uh, super chats before Tim Riggs. Sorry, this thing. Like Jeremy, uh, the chat is a little slow for me. So the Pui says, Epic Rant. Thanks, Jeff. The Pui, thank you very much. I'm glad to see you here every morning, my friend. And yeah, I'm glad you guys like the rant. They don't come out as often as I'd like because you got to search this hard to find stuff this stupid on the internet. Well, okay, no, you don't. But uh, stupid stuff in this department. So, yeah, I I just pulled an Ethan and Jeremy together. I did a so, and I did a, uh, yeah. So, God, I'm becoming them. Well, the best and the worst of them. I'm still the youngest one, so I got the most life. <clears throat> Uh, Zayer, thank you very much. Long time no see. Uh, the argument for why men get hired is that their work is more valid in response to that one super chat, just so you're aware. Okay. I I guess because I do my own thing, I work for myself, I work for all of you, I guess I haven't looked too much into that. I don't have any corporate bureaucracy, any office talk, any problems like that. You know, the people that I work for, you guys, just want to have fun and we have a good time. So I guess I don't put too much credence in that. I have a a different worldview when it comes to that. But I do understand uh, where you're coming from. So it'll be interesting to see. Like, I love how companies are like, oh, we we wanted more women. So we hired this CEO and this and that. And that's fine. But let's make sure that we cover the stories equally when the financials come out. Because we wanted to, you know, christen this ship with a beautiful bottle of champagne. Oh, we have a female lead or a female running the company. Okay, fine. As long as you're qualified, I don't care. I, you know, as a man, I'm not. Oh well, your woman's your boss is a woman. Okay, fine. I can I can take orders. I can take orders, guys. It's just uh, you know, I don't have a boss, thankfully. Tim Riggs, thank you very much. Is this study presented as done by a neutral party? The Shift Seven webpage makes it pretty clear they have an agenda. Their data is not trustworthy, dude. I don't trust their data. I don't trust anything reported from IO9. Seriously, I used to go to uh, Kotaku in college because I was looking for video game reviews that weren't just, you know, five out of ten. I wanted something a little longer. But then I started to see these articles talking about, you know, Anita Sarkeesian is the hero we need. I'm like, who the fuck is Anita Sarkeesian? So I looked her up. I'm like, oh, no. And then you find uh, videos of her saying, I'm not really a gamer. I got a stack of games. I'm new to gaming. And now she's this voice in gaming, and she really knows very little. There are Thousands of women out there, I almost said millions, but I doubt there's millions. Let's say hundreds, tens of thousands of women out there more qualified to talk about what she talks about. But because she complains the hardest, she gets, you know, the money and she gets all this stuff. And look at money is not a bad thing. Lying to people is a bad thing. Uh, that kills because she gets funded because of um, an agenda. She doesn't get funded because the people are behind her. You know, the people are behind us and the fandom menace and stuff like that. And that is why when we get to April and hundreds of people are going to descend upon Chicago to hang out and we can see the power of a community. And we got people from all over the world that can't make it, but we also got people from all over the world that will make it. And we'll be able to show them like, look, you want to say how this small group of internet trolls are angry at Star Wars? No, we're angry at bad movies. We're angry at how you guys, the world treats um, honesty. You make up stuff. You make up problems. You make up studies like this to further your agenda when in reality, the problems you have are self-imposed and we're past that as a society. So yeah, Tim, I don't trust their data. You got to, you know, you need an unbiased third party. Brandon Moist, the moisture is here, folks. Mortal Engines, 36% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh. Oh, let's uh, let me go look at that real quick. Rotten Tomatoes, and then uh, Mortal Engines. I love this show in the morning. Ooh, man, thirty six percent on forty five reviews. When does this movie even come out? I don't think it's going to be a hit. If it's out this weekend, I think it's going to flop hard. And you see, I could come out with a video and. And talk about I could take the same low road approach as Shift Seven and IO9 and talk about how another female led movie has failed and all this crap. But I'm not. My argument, my thesis in all of this is that their Betchel test uh, qualifications are garbage and Star Wars The Force Awakens was not a female led movie. Harrison Ford was the lead. Carrie Fisher 
was more uh, prominent in terms of you know marquee value than Daisy Ridley. But let's be honest, Harrison Ford was the draw. He brought in the two billion dollars. If he wasn't in that movie, well, then you get the Force of the Last Jedi, which again, Mark Hamill was the big draw. If you want to say it's an equal uh, thing with other movies, fine, but not those two. So Mortal Engines, let me pull this up for you guys right now. Let's have a good laugh at the um, the failure. I don't know. I don't really care. Is this like a Peter Jackson produced thing? I like Peter Jackson. Yeah. Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Peter Jackson is cool in my book. And you know what? Peter Jackson's early movies don't pass the Betchel test. Have you guys ever heard of his first film, Bad Taste? Not only does it not have any women in it, it doesn't have any people that aren't white. And Peter Jackson has to play multiple roles. You know what else doesn't pass the Betchel test? And this is just off of my memory. The F Evil Dead trilogy. I'm pretty sure that Evil Dead 1, 2, and Army of Darkness do not pass this Betchel test. But they're you know these great films, these things that actually change the world of filmmaking. I don't even think Spider-Man yeah, I don't think the Spider-Man Sam Raimi trilogy passed, because even in Spider-Man 2.1, when Mary Jane hangs out with her friend from the movie Death Proof or Death Race or whatever it is, um, they talk about Peter. And yeah, so yeah, these these big, great, iconic movies that, oh, well, they're not more recent. We As a society, we're more sensitive. Look, it's Spider-Man, Spider-Man, and, and it worked, and it's made tons of money, and it was culturally relevant, and it was the biggest thing. It beat Star Wars, the biggest thing ever. Um it didn't pass your little test, but it was one of the biggest movies ever. Let's not forget that. Kirsten Dunst had more presence than Daisy Ridley. Sorry, it just doesn't pass your little test. So Mortal Engines, 36%. 88% want to see it. Um, finally, Into the Spider-Verse is not 100% anymore. It dropped to 99. Sorry, I got to find out. Um, one rotten score. Ooh, let's see what the stinker says. It's a stinker. I'm curious to find out. I'm sorry. I don't want this movie to fail, but I don't want this agenda to trump this movie. So let's see. Uh, where's the rotten score? Where's the rotten score? Where's our hero? And I'm using that in, so in sarcastic. Uh, here we go. Roger Moore of Roger Moore. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is a nice transition. Man, this website looks definitely rel reliable. Why can't we get on the Rotten Tomatoes critic score? I would follow the criteria that I have to to be able to become a reliable critic on here. Not only would it elevate our channel, it would also be interesting to see um, how uh, an everyday Joe like myself, well, I'm a little better than everyday Joe. I'm like a downtown Joe. Some class. But my point is, I don't have a, a West Coast bias. So Spider uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Into the blurred murk of Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah, that's how it's supposed to look. And no, Sony Animation should not have let Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse out of its doors and onto the big screen, this blurred, jerky, pixelated condition. No kidding. Six minutes into this, and I got to track down the studio's representative at the screening who had overseen the um, other showings of the film in the market. No, it's just how it's supposed to look, he assured me. So, did all those folks raving up this Rotten Tomatoes watch it off screeners on their home systems? Because this plainly cut-rate enterprise in which the dot matrix of characters, CGI, is plainly visible on an IMAX screen near you. The action is <laughs> jerky as the 1960s TV anime, and action beats that develop into the Transformers blur is ugly enough to, on the big screen to spoil a pretty good effort at redefining comic book movies. They wanted to make it look like a comic book. They went too far. Now, before I uh, read the rest of this thing, I saw on my local news yesterday a clip where they talked about how it's going to get a sequel. And I did notice that the effects, the CGI looked bad, the animation. And I guess I'm spoiled because I'm playing a $40 Spider-Man video game, and it looks damn near realistic. I guess I have high standards. Woe is me. Damn me. Damn me to hell. <laughs> uh, as an animate, it uh, makes it look like it feel like a comic, though with thought balloons for narration and embracing and a mocking of the entire on-page, on-screen history of the character. Throw in, a <clears throat> throw in a cuter than usual Stan Lee cameo, and the tone at least is spot on. It is not as one of the alternate universe Spider-Mans, or woman, or pig, or teen girl, this one, a black and white noir shadow knocked off from the 1930s, voiced by Nicolas Cage, perfect growls, 
pretty hardcore for an origin story. The character school kid of African-American Latino heritage was bitten by a radioactive spider this time, but he's already a Spider-Man. There's already a Spider-Man in the market who has cornered all the crime fighting and web slinging. It's only in meeting Peter Parker that young Miles is pulled into the fight against Kingpin, who has uh, who has a collider slash particle accelerator that his minion is Catherine Hanna's Doc Ock, a oh, woman Doc Ock. No thanks. We'll use the Terra hole in space time and trap it in an alternate universe. Kingpin, he has his reasons, but that means other Spider-Man break into Miles' universe, and then there is Spider-Man casualties. Uh, I don't care. It is too long. Two out of four. The movie, uh, the movie just didn't hit with this guy. So Spider-Man no longer is the ninety-nine percent, and I couldn't be happier. I know that seems really petty. But my God, they were acting like because it has this score, everyone, oh, it's the best one ever. No, no, it's not. I guess it seems technically broken to this dude. We'll find out. I won't find out. You guys can tell me. If you see this, let me know. But uh, your Mortal Engines talk, uh, what are are some of the critics saying? It's well-designed as a means to transport you and certainly effective, it's for you. Okay. Like the Hobbit movies, Mortal Engines is a relentless assault of CGI and ear-splitting noise. Whew. Uh, USA Today gives it a positive score. IndieWire says there's so much to love here and so little opportunity to enjoy it. Hollywood Reporter is a top critic. Certainly lavish and expensive looking, but never thoroughly locks in to capture the imagination or sweep you off to a new world where you particularly want to spend time. So I guess it looks great, but it's hollow as shit. It's like that beautiful girl you finally go out on a date with. You're like, man, I'm on top of the world. It's the best looking woman ever, blah, blah, blah. And she has no personality. She just sits there on her phone. <laughs> Sounds like I'm speaking from experience. Uh, let's see. So thank you, Brandon Moist. Uh, Coconut Jeff is back, folks. I just sent you a Twitter DM. Go ahead and read it. Just please dox me on air. Spoiler alert. I'm a familiar face. Hashtag feel the moist. Oh, <laughs> I'll read your message off air, uh, Coconut Jeff. Oh, my God. I love I love it, though. I told my mom about it this morning. She's like, how was your high council? I was like, well, I didn't host it. It was fine, though. And I was like, somebody calls himself Coconut Jeff. And I, I read her the thing, and she's like, oh, okay. And she just left for work. She doesn't get it. She's not cool enough. But uh, she has a great, great uh, parent. Shout out to her. Thank you, Liquor Jim. You know what's a fresh idea that people get pumped up for? Stealing Solo Captain's parody. Yeah, I'm like I said, guys, I'm so thankful that you guys supported it the way you did. And I want to do more comics. I want to do all kinds of great stuff. And uh, this audience, this community has made it possible. So if you make it to Chicago and you have backed the book, um, I'm not going to hug you against your own will, but I'll high five you and we'll have a beer, man. So let's see. Uh, somebody has any question about this world class bullshit or something? Don't go in there, Jeff. It's dark. Uh, let's see. Jeff, you should do your own uh, study titled Force Diversity and Feminism in Every Entertainment is Bound to Fail. I could do that. I could. Maybe Maybe I'll... Uh, remember how credible Dr. Morton Bay Bugs theory was about how it's all Russian trolls and Russian bots? Um, that all fell apart. I guess if you do listen to what Ethan and Jeremy talk about, if you wait it out, these culture warriors will fall apart and die. They'll eat themselves and they'll lose interest. They'll get pregnant. They'll get somebody pregnant. They'll like, I have to get a real job. I can't spend time on the Twitter. And then they'll realize that life isn't about uh, being offended on the internet. It's about uh, family and all these other things or your dreams and your goals. You know, maybe you don't want to have a family or you can't have a family, but you can live a fulfilled life. Do what you want to do. But uh, offensive internet content is not what's going to make you uh, happy. So let's see. Our friend Cesare Japan says, Anita gets funded because of business write-offs. Just kidding. Or I guess that's what, yeah, JK. Um, She, I'm so glad that we never tried to engage her or do anything with her. I don't, I don't want to get involved with that stuff. That is not for me. Um, We've had one kind of debate. We did it about a year ago, right after the Force or the Last Jedi came out. Our guy basically had a debate with me here on the channel. The movie is great because it's diverse and inclusive. I said, "No, it's a shitty movie because this, that, and the other." And he keeps he kept jumping back to that. So good for him uh, that he believes that fully. Hey, you know, if you keep believing it, maybe it'll become. No, it won't become true. Just keep believing it, bro. But thank you, Cesaria Japan. 
Uh, yeah, bad taste is awesome. People like bad taste. Bad taste is on YouTube. If you guys would like to join me one day for a, a screening of bad taste, we can all watch it together on the YouTubes and we can have a lot of fun. So uh, let me know if you'd like to make that happen. I own bad taste on video. I made my friends watch it last year. We went to Gatlinburg for Phil's birthday. I was like, guys, we're going to watch a really fucking weird movie. And so we watched bad taste and they hated it. <laughs> I was laughing. Tim Riggs, thank you very much. Looking at this study, yeah, it's garbage. Female led is based by billing in order of the credits, not screen time, lines, etc. Hmm. So yeah, it seems like their argument keeps falling apart further and further and further. You know, Shift 7 can have this really strong group of individuals that want to write the study, but we have all of you, I have all of you, and all we got to do is look at it together and there are people from every walks of life, and we can tear down their argument with all the same validity that any professional critique of a paper would be critiqued. No sexism or racism required. We can tear you down with facts because factually, you're an idiot. Um, but yeah, Tim, I'm with you, man. I, I just don't trust it. I didn't get the, a chance to read the actual thing that it came from. I will. And we'll talk about it more. Shit. If this video gets, you know, this if Good Morning Pop Culture goes crazy, I think I might have to do a separate video on this and we'll talk about it. Great old fan 84, thank you very much. Good morning from Comics Elite. Holy crap, new comic Tuesday with Batman Who Laughs, Batman Damned, and Ryan uh, Kincaid in the store this week doing sketches. Man, you guys sound like a really fun store. So if you guys are in Indianapolis, you want to check it out. Or in the area, you just go. Google Comics Elite. I follow him on Facebook. Both the owner, Andrew, are great dudes. You've heard me talk about it because it's the truth. Very generous guys who are helping me, uh, who have helped me in the past. And um, I needed questions about shipping, stealing solo, and all the people I'm talking to as well. So, uh, yeah, guys, check out those stuff. And check out their online um, their sales. They do online sales all the time on uh, Facebook. So, yeah, give them a like on Facebook. doesn't take but just a second. Uh, Batman Damned, I have Batman Damned Book 1, Bat Dong, the animated series. I need to check it out, the, the second and third and whatever else is out. I want to be into Batman more. I want to be into comics more. But they're always doing stuff that uh, it just doesn't work. It never works for me. And speaking of doesn't work, we're going to get ready to talk about Marvel, Grendel fan. So since you have an inside knowledge of comic book stores, and you work for one of the best in the Midwest, maybe the best in the Midwest, we don't know. I'm going to go out there and say you guys are up there. Put it like this. I would much rather hang out with the guys from Comics Elite than the dudes from uh, a few stores around me. And no, you'd be surprised what I mean by that. So um, I'm gonna. Uh, we're going to talk about this in just a moment, folks. Um, Laden Swallow, yes, I was on a debate. It's on this channel. It came out January or no, it was originally on a channel called writer junkie. And that guy has tried to contact us and I have no, Oh my God, I am terrible with emails. Folks, if you're out there and you emailed us, it is, it is for the last three months or so. I've asked Kendo to check them out. Uh, certain things get to me. I gotta, I gotta record somebody's audio. I apologize. We've just been super busy between the comic and this and other stuff. It's, um, you know, it's been a crazy couple of months, but uh, yes, Writer Junkie is the name of the channel. Check it out. Give him a subscribe. Go back to January. Dude ho hosted it on this channel oh, right after. He gave me the go-ahead to do it. And we have a debate. It's like two hours long, maybe. Shit, I don't remember. But I won. <laughs> I think I won. Everybody was like, damn, dude, you smoked him. It was a good time. But it's here on the channel. So if you guys go back to check out the old stuff, um, yeah, that's the thing. You guys should definitely go out and check out our old stuff. I've noticed. I, I can joke about, well, the subscriber count hasn't really gone up much. Very true. But our view count has, like, a lot. It goes up, like, tens of thousands every, you know, I'll go to bed. 50,000 new views. It's like, cool. So it's reaching a point where we're growing on that level. So uh, thank you to everybody. Cesario Japan. Uh, I got a double dose of this topic today. First Clownfish TV, then World Class Bullshitters. What an insightful display of the debate today for this topic. Well, thank you, Cesario Japan. I'll have to check out Clownfish TV. Do I subscribe to Clownfish TV? That sounds familiar. Honestly, I, I think I may have already been 
uh, a supporter of that channel. Oh, it's the Cinema Massacre. I don't want to watch that right now. Clown Fish TV. Uh, no, I don't subscribe, but let me check them out and see if they're something I'm about. Oh, yeah, they did. Well, maybe, you know what this means, guys, right? This means that maybe Clownfish TV should come to World Class Bullshitters and hang out with us. So I'm going to subscribe. Um, Cesario Japan, if you're a, a common viewer of their content and they know who you are, if you'd like to have them appear on the say, say, hey, World Class Bullshitters is interested in having you guys on. You heard it here from me directly. I'd love to collaborate with a new channel. Um, I'm sure they have a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, Zayer, thank you very much. Marvel's Donnie Coates Venom and DC's JL Odyssey. Uh, all is, is all that is good at the moment. My comic shop is Sphinx Comics in SoCal. It is an ASL store. Great guys. All right, so folks, if you're in the SoCal area, Sphinx Comics. Zayer is the uh, has spoken, and I I try, well, I put it like this: If you guys like what we do here, we must have a similar sense of uh, or similar sensibilities in terms of entertainment. So. Um, I trust your guys' takes. I trust your opinions. And um, it's funny, too. Grendel fan from Comics Elite says uh, Donnie Coates' Mar Venom is awesome as well. I was going to pick up some stuff. During the stream, I went to pick it up, and then the stream died, and I must have not picked it up. But I'll go give it a shot. I keep hearing the name Donnie Coates, and I keep hearing Venom. You guys know my take on Venom. I may not be the biggest Venom supporter, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Uh, can I post the debate? If you guys remind me closer to the end of the show, I will look for the link uh, because um, it, it's real far back. Uh, Chewbacca fan 0824, the Virgin, my hero. Uh, the Last Jedi is great because of how diverse the cast is. Yeah, and it's so dense. Everything rhymes. It's like poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had a moment there. Speaking of moments, coming up, there will be a moment here on the channel. Not today, obviously. We're going to have our buddy Gerhardt. Uh, he has been a patron, a longtime supporter, and he's been very patient. He wants to do an EU stream about Star Wars. So if you guys love to get passionate about that stuff, uh, he is invoking his... Uh, he's cashing in his patron uh, money in the bank privileges, and he's going to have a stream. He'll be joining us. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to make a time listening to this on the replay, or if you're listening live, let us know. But uh, thank you for uh, being patient. Just been super bogged down trying to put out content as well as do the shows. So, uh, thank you. Got a pull. I am an Ethan Jeremy. So, uh, yeah. Cesario Japan, thank you very much. Sorry, Jeff, just recently subbed to them. Oh, okay. Don't apologize. I'll, I'll make the contact. It's I'm the channel. It's my responsibility. I just thought, like, we have our friend uh, Sketch Therapy or Puerto Rican Jeremy, whatever you want to call him, that dude is really invested in a lot of YouTube communities, and he's ta he always talks about crossing the streams, crossing the streams. And because of his, quite frankly, his personality and the way he's able to connect with these people, um, that is how I can be like, hey, can we have Doug Tenaple on the show? And he'll pop up, or can we get this or that? So the dude is awesome and really into the community. I didn't know had you, you know, had a similar uh, approach with Clownfish TV, but I'll take care of it. I subscribed. Uh, Ethan Long, thank you very much. Could Infinity War movie told primarily through Thanos' POV work? Well, let's see. Could an Infinity War film from his point of view work? I would argue that part of the film Infinity War is told from his point of view. You mean strictly from that? Okay, let me let me pull it back for a quick second. There's a James Bond novel. So everybody knows the movie The Spy Who Loved Me, the one with Jaws, you know, the Roger Moore film from 1977. But the the book that it's based on is told from, at least the first half, is told from the female agent's point of view. And then James Bond kind of comes in towards the end. I don't know if from a marketing standpoint it would work, but I'll tell you, from at least from a, a fan standpoint as well as a, a creator standpoint, an artistic standpoint... I think it would really work well. Sometimes, okay, for example, my favorite Doctor Who episode is told from the point of another uh, person, and then the Doctor kind of comes in at the end. I love the uh, Absorbalov episode. I like uh, Blink, which is considered one of the best modern Doctor Who episodes. He doesn't show up until the end. So 
I think it could work from a creative standpoint. I don't think a studio would take the risk. I don't think a studio would be daring enough to say, hey, yeah, let's put the mar most marketable thing at the end. I don't think audiences of today have the patience. In 1989, you, you, were, you were skirting towards the edge of if an audience could handle it. But I would love the idea because I think Thanos is the most interesting, compelling character. All villains that think they're the good guy are the best villains. Yeah, you got the ones that eat up the scenery and are just shit heels, but the ones that think they're doing the most noble thing are the best villains. So Ethan Long, I do think it could work. I don't think it'll ever happen, but I think it could work. Uh, Dr. Coffinales, thank you very much. The Betchel test is garbage. Gravity does not pass. It only has one woman in it. <laughs> Dude, I, I I like to tell you guys what I'm going to work on and then sometimes surprise you, but I am working on something in regards to the Betchel test. I've been working on it actually uh, in my mind for the last three or four days. I've been talking to Nick about it because it is a dangerous precedent. If people feel, if studios, if creators, if uh, filmmakers feel that they must pass this test, this arbitrary thing created by the internet, well, maybe not the internet. But they become creatively stifled. They they get put into a box. They don't want to offend. They think, oh, this is what I must do in today's setting. Much like a great stand-up comedian, if you don't give a shit about offending and you tell a joke and you make people laugh till they cry or piss their pants, you're going to make money. And if you're making money, you will change the course of the culture. Uh, I honestly look at our channels, Ethan, Jeremy, and myself. The way we've discussed Star Wars has emboldened a lot of people to open up and voice their displeasure. People are no longer afraid to talk about entertainment so bluntly. If you're displeased with the direction of it, you're not like all these other channels that want to get in the good graces. The Shill channel died in 2018. You want to talk about great achievements? Yes, we have had massive growth, but the Shill channel died a very hard death in 2018. People have really taken a closer look at the way they present themselves to the audience, to an audience, and they listen to what they say. Uh, these these places have to be very, very careful if they're sponsored, if they have corporate interests. I'll give a shout out to Roz Weston of um, Entertainment Tonight Canada. He has gone out of his way to talk about how he's not a shill and how he's not this and that. And that goes to show the power of our community in the year 2018. And 2019 is only going to be better. But uh, Dr. Coffinales, Betchel test is garbage. I will be doing uh, a deeper dive into that. I think people need to know. People need to know about how the movies that get praised in the media that the, the tastemakers want to raise up, um, why they're raised up, not on the merits of the film, on the arbitrary nature of, <clears throat> excuse me, of a fictional thing. So let's start talking about this um, Marvel thing in front of your screen. Thank you for those that have been waiting. Now, if you're a Marvel Comics consumer, and we know you're not because it's 2018 and Marvel Comics are shit, um, if you've been a, historically, if you've been a consumer, if you have been, you'll know that Marvel books get rebooted, renumbered, ended all the time. Now, I'm working on a Captain Marvel thing. I'm going to put on Patreon first so I can have some time to edit the video itself. But Captain Marvel has been rebooted four to five times. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. It's either four or five times since the Carol Manvers inception in 2012. And the most issues it got in a single run is like 13. Maybe maybe 17. Maybe 17. But they subsequently went down. Marvel has a history, a more recent history, of constantly chasing the number ones because the number ones with the variant covers and this, that, and the other, they're the people, or they're the thing that they think people buy. As a guy that has an attention span longer than 12 seconds. And as a guy who loves a good story, long form, short form, I want to get invested in a character. It's so funny how terrible stories become better when sometimes the more, more recent stuff is dog shit. Like admittedly, I find the prequels to be more enjoyable in a sequel trilogy world. People want to bash on Spider-Man one more day. It was a dumb decision. It's a dumb story, but brand new day, which I've always enjoyed to some degree, is looking a lot brighter 
when I look back compared to what modern Spider-Man is. You think, married Spider-Man doesn't work. But married Spider-Man did work for decades, and the sales weren't bad. Well, Aunt May being this, or Aunt May or this or that, look it. There are classic hallmarks to these characters that people like. I like Aunt May. I didn't, you know, I wasn't happy when she died. Those are things, even though I'm not going to buy an Aunt May figure. Actually, I would buy an Aunt May action figure if they made a classic Romita-styled one. Quick sidebar. That is what I foresee the future of Marvel action figures from Hasbro being. Eventually, we'll have created all the characters, classic and modern. Then we'll move into an era like uh, Toy Biz used to do, where they're based off certain artist designs. So you'll see a Steve Ditko Spider-Man, you'll see a John Romita Spider-Man, and those are going to be the next wave of toys, and I'm, I'm looking forward to that. But back to this thing. Marvel history will be destroyed in 2019. Well, Marvel's history has been destroyed every year, time and time again, because of garbage on Twitter, on Facebook, social media, all these things that is bigger than the Marvel brand to them. You know, Tom Brevoort... We just want good comics. We don't want you to shit on Stan Lee. You should have just said Stan was the greatest and shut your mouth because without him, you wouldn't have a job. Maybe he didn't hire you, but he built the company that pays you. A new teaser from Marvel Comics pretend, or portends excuse me, a potential rewrite of the Marvel history, starting with the origin of the Fantastic Four. The teaser asks, who really gave the Fantastic Four their powers, calling into question their classic origin being bombarded by cosmic rays during experimental space flight and implies there's some kinds of ent oh god some kind of entity or person behind their true origins i hate when they do this shit it takes away the nature of you know what's the right for how i want to phrase it the spontaneity of their incident which you know it's like oh it was all part of the plan really all part of the plan you know just when you thought marvel couldn't get any dumber they do stuff like this and I'm not trying to be um, overly dramatic right now, but I do feel like when you take away the character's core, much like Spider-Man Homecoming, great power, great responsibility, uh, you take away the interesting dynamic of why they do what they do and why I want to be attached to the characters. So it's not just who did the Avengers thing or who did the Fantastic Four, how they lose their powers. There's one for Captain America and there's one for Spider-Man. Who really brought back Spider-Man for uh, after Spider-Man No More? Now, let me answer that question for you if you don't actually know what that means. I'm sorry, I've said actually too many times. So here, look at the Captain America. Here we go. Now Marvel will destroy Spider-Man's history too. And I love how that's in quotation. Look, they've already destroyed Spider-Man's history. So... There we go. Well, we'll just read what they say. An Amazing Spider-Man number 50, Peter inspired is inspired to resume his career as Spider-Man after saving the life of a night watchman who reminded him of Uncle Ben and the greatest responsibility that comes with great power. Could someone specific have orchestrated that turn of events combined with the previous teaser, which implied someone has directly or was directly responsible for the Fantastic Four gaining their powers? It seems someone may be tampering with Marvel's time stream. Oh, God, it's going to be Kang. It's always Kang. Now, you guys know how passionate I get about Spider-Man. I care. The core character of Spider-Man will be disrespected and torn apart if they go out of their way to say there's some entity that whispered into Spider-Man's ear, be Spider-Man. Because it's the always Spider-Man's the story of internal struggle, guilt, power, responsibility. You have to always have that at the core. Like in Spider-Man 2, because Spider-Man 2, the film, which we're going to be watching this Friday night, uh, make sure you guys join us for all the the, uh, the first two Sam Raimi Spider-Man films, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be prepared for that, because that's going to be a lot of fucking fun. I'm just telling you guys, it's going to be a lot of fun. But um, it's the internal struggle. It's what made the character himself. You have to respect that, because when you take away the core of the character, you don't have Spider-Man anymore. You have the costume, you have shitty jokes. I, I do love that Spider-Man makes jokes. It's part of his character. But he's not Deadpool. And today's character, today's writers, excuse me, do not understand any of these Marvel characters, not just Spider-Man, but any of them. They don't understand why they do what they do. You think comic books are just comic books. If you were to sit down and try to, like, if somebody said, Jeff, you're going to work on Spider-Man for six months, I'd go, okay, shit, I guess I'm stuck working on Spider-Man for six months. The first thing I would ask myself, as many writers should, is who is the character? Why do they do what they do? Who is your daddy? What does he do? 
I would find myself asking those questions instead of what jokes can I make about what supervillain? It's got to fall in line organically. Um, the way I like to write is I come up with a story. Then I get the characters and why they're in the story. And then I write the interaction based off what feels natural and organic. If Spider-Man only makes one joke in a comic book that I'm working on, well, then it's going to be a joke, one joke. I'm not going to put, you know, every five seconds one just because, oh, it's what people think Spider-Man is. Because Spider-Man has switched to Deadpool light, and I don't like it. Uh, we had a, so a couple Super Chats rolling first. Uh, Grendel Fan says, yes, we saw that article, and the first thing that came to mind was Original Sin by Jason Aaron and Mike Diodato, trying to rewrite their history again. I would like to interview Tom Brevoort or someone at Marvel and just get a straight up answer. I don't want to talk to them about diversity. I don't want to talk to them about inclusion or any of this social media stuff. World-class bullshitters officially wants to know from a creative standpoint, why you do what you do. If your answer is money, we'll step back and respect that. I get it. You're a business. But what do you benefit either financially or emotionally from changing the character's and uh, changing the status quo constantly. People aren't reading your books. We know that. They're at a historical low. Well, we don't know digital sales. Look, I know how to read every Marvel comic for free. I don't even read them for free. That's how little they mean to me. And I don't mean just like classic stuff. I can get this week's books online without downloading shit right this second. I could read you any book that's out right now. But I refuse to share that publicly on this channel because I do think you should support good comics. If you like them, if you back them. And the thing is, when I say support comics, support your comics elite, your um, Sphinx comics, your rock and roosters of the world. Don't hurt those guys because of some uh, corporate dickheads up in New York. Don't hurt them. You know, your community-based stores need you. Go in, find stuff you like, buy from them. You pay cover price everywhere. Why not support the little guys? It, it, if you were in a business, you would want people to support your business too. And yes, sometimes people say, well, I'd rather get it on Amazon for cheaper. Sometimes your local comic book shops are better prices than Amazon. Like, for example, there is a thing called Batman the Animated Series Expression Packs. They're action figures where you get a Batman and you get like eight faces and different capes and different hands and different weapons. I got that for Batman. I got that for the Joker. And Harley Quinn was $58 on Amazon. My local comic book shop, $50. And you save eight bucks and there's no shipping. So be a discerning consumer. Pay attention. That's my little piece of advice today, guys. I know I throw out little things here and there, but pay attention to, um, if you're into geek culture, look around because sometimes Amazon is not your best bet. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not. But Grendel fan, I hope from a standpoint from you guys that you don't get people that are turned off from the constant reboots. That's it. The biggest question for me or from me is, how can Marvel go 30, 40 years telling the same continuity and the stories are great? I mean, obviously there were bad comics back in the day, especially uh, there's this channel called like Owen Likes Comics or Owen Talks Comics. Somebody shared a video talking about Onslaught or Avengers Heroes Reborn, the failed Marvel reboot. If you're out there and you're a Marvel fan, you remember Heroes Reborn. It didn't work. They brought back Rob Liefeld, Jim Lee. They fired Rob Liefeld, I think, middle of the thing, be, uh, the Captain America stuff. It's where the big, fat-chested Captain America comes from. They've had shitty reboots, but people would want to. People come up with the question, do they do these things to get people to love the original status quo when they bring it back? I, dis I don't think that's the case. I think that Marvel and Disney properties in general are always chasing for that new audience. And... I understand that you want to grow your audience. Look, we have, we're at a subscriber plateau, but the channel's just as healthy as it's ever been. Even when we were gaining, you know, 10,000 a month, we're bringing in the same views and stuff as we have historically, because we have a strong core fan base that backs us up at all, at all costs. That's why, yes, I want to do things to bring in new people, but I never want to alienate the people who, you know, brought me to the dance. That's just not how I personally operate. I think if Marvel could find a happy medium, much like we all want to find a happy medium, we wouldn't be turned off to announcements like this because I don't talk and critique Marvel because I want to shit on them to entertain you guys. As a consumer, as somebody who wanted to dedicate their life to work for this company, I just don't like these things because I guess I respect the characters too much. I respect all these characters. The creative efforts of some man, yes, I'll just say some man because we know who created these characters. Same with Star Wars. 
But they're the creative characters, they're the, the creations of these men. They respect them. They give us these great characters, and then they get handed off to other people. And for decades, they're respected. They're handled well. In many ways, they're coddled. But like Spider-Man, I don't think Spider-Man was mishandled until fairly eh, the 90s when we had the Clone Saga come out. I thought Spider-Man Clone Saga is what really uh, kills the perfect run of Spider-Man from the 60s inception. 70s was a little rough, but still good. 80s, man. 80s Spider-Man. It's not just that I want to praise 1980s content. 80s Spider-Man is some of the best in the decade. You want to impress a guy like me? You want to make uh, an Oscar-worthy Spider-Man flick? You make the death of Gene DeWolf. You want to talk about a, a superhero film with a strong female lead? You want to make a Gene DeWolf film. But Gene DeWolf is not sexy. She doesn't have the market appeal, the curb appeal. She's not going to get people into theaters. But it's the story of a woman who became a cop, who wanted to you know, impress her father and all this whole stepfather. So you got that daddy element. That's some drama that people can understand. Then she gets murdered. So Spider-Man's on the hunt. It's a murder mystery. It's dark and it's gritty. And your villain is not, you know, Electro or somebody crazy throwing out jokes. It's a darker story. It's a grounded. It's like a, if you want to make a, two Spider-Man films, you do that and you do Craven's Last Hunt. And you can tell two impactful Spider-Man stories grounded. And you can still have fun. Spider-Man's about fun. Action is his reward. But if you want to tell some heavy-hitting stories, instead of trying to make, well, we got Zendaya, who's now Mary Jane, and this and that, and the cast is diverse, so that it deserves an Oscar. No. Tell a compelling story that gets people, make them cry, make them laugh, all that shit. Hit every emotion. Don't worry about passing the Betchel test. Pass the Jeff test. Does it hit all the emotions appropriately? Do you leave the theater questioning you know, what's next? Were you entertained? You, you, you know, there's certain things that if I was a, if I had the uh, grand power of making all these movies, I'd want you to leave happy. And if the movie's intent was to make you upset, well, then I want you to leave questioning life and down and somber. But I don't want you to leave in the theater angry for the wrong reasons. Like, we left Suicide Squad angry because it sucked. You don't want that. Uh, Zaire, thank you very much. DC Sideways and Curse of Brimstone is also good, by the way. Well, let me take a screenshot. Uh, I will check those out. I will check those out. I, I, the, the thing is, too, you know, yesterday we talked about John Buscema and gave him some praise. I do enjoy reading comics that I haven't um, read yet, and sometimes they inspire me, especially in Stealing Solo. So uh, thank you, Zaire. I got that. Uh, let's see. We have five pounds super chat retracted. So thank you very much. Anyway, Grand Inquisitor, thank you very much. Do you think the culture war will get worse in 2019 or will taper off and once again embrace sanity? I don't have much hope for the latter. Well, Grand Inquisitor, I like to be an optimist. I like to think that that's the case. I think at the end of the day, those on the side of sanity in the culture war will win. Because the people that are the most extreme on the opposite side eat themselves. It's, you, it's a wait-and-see game. On top of that, when the real world calls and you are out there working, doing what you got to do to be responsible, to be held to a higher standard, and you don't have time to bitch on the internet, well, then, yeah, those people's causes will die out, too. Tumblr, removing what it removes. Eventually, Tumblr will just disappear completely. These platforms will self-cannibalize. These things will happen, and you'll have less and less and less. I don't get political on this channel. I don't like to talk politics. Every once in a while, something political gets involved, intertwined with entertainment. And well, you know what? I look at the election. When you, just, when you listen to the internet and you think one thing is one way and these polls and how the media skews certain things, and then the real people go out and vote or do what they got to do, well, then you see the response. That is what I'm waiting to happen. When your average Joe and Jane go out there, was it Joe Sixpack and Jane Boxwine, according to Kendo? When they go out there to vote with their wallets, when they go out there to vote literally, uh, you will see how things change and you will see a reflection. 2019 will, I'm going to say this, 2019 is going to essentially be the same in the build-up to Star Wars. Star Wars will be what hap What will be the uh, battleground. So we have literally a year. Was it next? Was it the 19th of 2019 is when it comes out? 1219 or 1220? That is the battleground. 2019 is the battleground. Now let, it, let me break it down a little deeper for just a moment. Let me take a sip of coffee first. 
on the video game front, we have seen that financially it does not benefit everyone to be a woke company. EA sales are down. Uh, Bethesda, while not woke, produce bad content. The best producers, the most successful producers, and I don't mean just video game producers, I mean us, everybody. If you're a fan-focused product, if you make people feel good about being involved with your product, you win. 2018, 2017, let's just say from 2014 on, has been very adversarial. You have producers trying to dictate what consumers need and trying to change their hearts and minds. You have shill media backing up the producers, and you have a disconnect with the fans who just say no, and they don't consume said product. See Ghostbusters 2016. 2019, in the beginning, look, at it's like every decade rollover too. The beginning of the year, the first couple of months are going to be the same as the end of the year. It doesn't reset the clock and the calendar reset, but the you know the hearts and minds and the, the political or the social climate doesn't. The first three months are all going to be about Captain Marvel. The more we talk about it, the more the shill media talks about it, the more the ones that want to act like it's an empowerment movement want to talk about it. That is the first battle. That is the first um, war or first part of the war will fight in 2019. Then Captain Marvel has a built-in failsafe. Captain Marvel doesn't work. They don't like this. Well, Avengers is like 40 days later. So people have a short attention span. Now, Star Wars had The Last Jedi come out and people hated it. Then Solo came out six months later. We had we have built a community in that six months. Marvel is not allowing a community or an uprising to be built. It's going to have to be a massive piece of shit for Captain Marvel to gain the level of Last Jedi hate. If it's bad, if it's bad, it has to be that bad. It's not just because it's a woman. It has to be a bad film. If, if in that 40 days it can reach that level, well, then we're going to see a post-Avengers of people who are going to say, I loved Avengers, but man, that Captain Marvel movie, this, that, and the other. We will see. But you know that the enlightened media is going to basically tout Captain Marvel as the second coming just because it's a female-led action movie that's like the third or fourth of its kind. Do you remember the third or fourth space movie that came out post-Star Wars? Not really. You remember all the Star Wars movies. You remember the Star Trek movies. You remember those big brands, the big iconic juggernauts. But you don't remember the things that came in the wake of them as much as well. So you're going to get through your Captain Marvel. Then... After post Spider Man, because it's it's really the Disney stuff that is part of this culture war that we fight. It's the Disney because Disney has the money, they have the power. They come in, they buy it up, they change it, and they try to change society with it. But society doesn't really need to be changed because society's in a good place. You know, they say that peace on earth and goodwill towards men shit around Christmas. It's around Christmas. I think we had reached that. We had reached a level of respect. It, you can't wipe out bigotry and racism completely you can't wipe out uh people's pre-existing things completely the only thing you can do is you can educate them and you can enlighten them and then the next generation becomes more accepting and we slowly we just keep on moving and moving and moving and moving cool you know we'd reached a point where you know it's no big deal to be a black person or a white person it's like i don't care that my bank manager's a black dude as long as my you know my accounts are doing well good you know i don't see people that 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 divide that was there 50 years ago died off. It took a while. It took 50 years. Well, maybe say by the 90s, we kind of had a much different uh, approach to it. But it happened. Let's not act like all of a sudden Black Panther is the reason why you know 50 years of uh, racial progression happened. That is, and that's when you get the war, the fights, the the shit like that, and then people want to throw. Oh, you don't like it? You're a racist. So we'll see. 2019 could change towards the end with Star Wars. And the 2020 is where I think it'll truly peter out. We'll see exactly how Disney plays it in 2019, especially with Lucasfilm. Are we going to see the original trilogy pop up to confuse and distract people? That is why you had your Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures to detract. Well, it's a kid's property. It detracts from um, criticism. Not really, though. It's Star Wars, and Star Wars isn't just for kids. And I, I just need to make that one video. I feel like it was a little too late. 
but enough people will get the message and care. Press one if you'll care. I'll care. I'll dance. I'll scream. Uh, let's see. Where else were we at? So um, thank you very much, Grand Inquisitor. Uh, Grand Fan 84 Captain Marvel will be on her eighth series. Excuse me, eighth series. You know what, dude? Whenever I work on a comic video, I need to just ask you for some help. You got my phone number. I'll be like, hey, man, I got a couple questions for you. I don't need you to get back right away. But, um, you know, little things like that. That's how you truly make a great video that stands up to a lot of these, you know, false critics. You just you load it up with facts. And then when it's your opinion, you base an opinion off said facts or whatever, and you have a strong thesis, a strong argument. Uh, let's see. Uh, the next thing you know, NPC will attack Hasbro, the community of My Little Pony. They haven't already. You know what? I like to leave the My Little Pony people alone. Now, I will make jokes. I'm not here to defend them. I'm not. But you know what? Bronies, just there's a difference between like, if I'm not into it, like, I'm not into brony stuff, fine. But it doesn't hurt anybody. If you want to dress up like a horse and run around or call each other names, okay, fine. Enjoy yourself. Believe me. I don't care. But when uh, a company attacks their fans for being a normal person, that's when you get the problem. So we can always make fun of bronies, but then again, they're bronies. They're just a thing. But I digress. Pagan God X, thank you very much. Spider-Man versus Wolverine, one of the best books ever. Pagan God X, I love that title. I read that last year, maybe this year. I don't remember exactly. But it was awesome because they go to, that's one where they go to Europe, right? Yeah, and they fight in the graveyard. I like that book. Folks, if you haven't had a chance to check it out, do go check it out. 20, I, I don't know if I want to say 2018. We'll just call it. 2018 was the year where Wolverine became my third favorite, maybe second favorite Marvel character. I don't know what happened and why I like Wolverine so much, but I finally see the appeal that everyone saw 25 years ago. I'm finally on the Wolverine bandwagon. I picked up multiple Wolverine action figures. I own a lot of Wolverine comic books. I study Wolverine art. I like to draw Wolverine. If I could show the picture, because on my Facebook flashback timeline, I had a thing that says, well, I still draw, but I don't want to be a comic book artist anymore. What a difference a year makes. I drew a picture of a naked lady, which I can't show, but then I drew a little picture of Wolverine. And then on the other one, I had a picture of Spider-Man and another naked lady, because those are my favorite things to draw. But... Uh, you know, Wolverine, man, I'm a, I, I dig it. And Pagan God X, I dig that book hardcore. It's a, it's a fantastic thing. So, I will. Um, I think I might reread that over the weekend. I mean, I have some time. I got a Christmas party to go to, but uh, maybe, maybe I'll take my stuff to stream at the Christmas party. I mean, who, what, who does what on a Saturday night? We could stream a game. We could stream a game. Grendel fan 84 thank you very much. Uh, Marvel did this literally less than five years ago. Headlines like these anger us because we have to spin this into positivity for our customers. Ugh. Yeah, I, I get... Dude, I get it. Um, my comic book guys have to get... I mean, your, your livelihood depends on their whims, their creative whims, or lack of creativity. I get it. I understand. I feel bad for you guys at the same time, too. And I feel bad for the consumers that want to love... I, some self-pity. I, I want to be able to go back into my store every couple Wednesdays. Like, Alright, it's time to see what's next with Spider-Man. Like, I never really had like a bad period in my life where I was like down and depressed. But it was a bright spot in my life when it's like, alright, it's comic book day. And I'd get my little email. Alright, I need this book and that book. I'd walk in to Rock and Rooster. I'd be like, hey, Dave, what's up, man? Hey, Rick, the other owner. He wasn't there. That day we filmed there. But you walk in, you do your thing, you pick up your books, you go home, and you're like, oh, shit, I can't wait to see what's next. And this is an unpopular opinion. I loved when Doc Ock took over Spider-Man. Superior Spider-Man, loved that whole series. I had fun with it. I just, I, there's something else happened, and I lost it. And you guys definitely understand, or I understand where you guys are feeling, or how you're feeling. So, I don't, I, I just, I can't get behind Marvel in this. And have you noticed, too, Grendel fan? And maybe I'm reading too into this, but I don't think I am. Tell me if you think I am. Have you noticed how they're using all the classic logos? Like, they haven't used that Captain America logo in a while. Or the old Fantastic Four logo. Now, Spider-Man's logo, here's the thing about Spider-Man, too. Not the film, too. I mean, Spider-Man also, T-O-O. 
they don't really change the character up too much because somehow everything that started stuck so well. I believe it took until 1967 for Spider-Man to outsell um, Fantastic Four. Like, there's this guy. His name's Arlen Schumer. He writes comic stuff or he writes books on comics. Weird guy. I used to be Facebook friends with him. Really hard to deal with. But he said, oh, that's a... I said something about, you know, Marvel has always said that Fantastic Four is their biggest book until John Romita took over on Spider-Man and then Spider-Man was their biggest book for decades. He goes, that's a lie. Spider-Man, the Ditko books were this and that. But slowly over time, you see old sales figures pop up from reputable sources and, you know, the guy was full of shit. So um, just to see these old logos come up, really, are they trying to evoke nostalgia you know if you're a captain america fan from the 70s you're like i remember when captain america and the falcon teamed up and with spider-man and they fought that guy with the the who had the stroke or whatever and his face was hanging off and they fought under the bridge like that's a specific issue i'm sorry but they're trying to go for that will it work i don't know i don't know uh, Bro, Paulo Creed, the culture war is just to distract us from the rich continuing their to line their pockets at the expense of the poor and middle class. Uh, th there are definitely levels of distraction in the culture war, but I would ask that you pay attention to the culture war as well as other things. I'm not saying you have to focus all your energies on the culture war, but with the culture war, it will dictate the future. This is really like a fight for the future type of thing because they will dictate what movies get made how they think society should be represented, not what is actually represented. And they will they will lie to further an agenda. Uh, culture war is very important, folks. Just pay attention to both. Uh, you have the time. And that's why channels like mine and Ethan and Jeremy, we can tell you what's going on. We can show you the articles. We can show you the actual facts. And then we give you our opinions based on that. And then you can make up your mind. You can fight against or for or whatever. But we at least present you with everything. David Hervey, thank you very much. Did they change MJ's name in the MCU Spider-Man to Michelle from Mary Jane because of marijuana? I don't know. I don't really... I think they threw in the MJ thing as like a wink and a nod and an eye roll because they know people like Mary Jane, and I think they'll use that... I think they'll have the real Mary Jane show up down the road. Well, let me correct myself. I thought that. Like I said on the High Council last night, guys... I firmly believe Sony's, their balls are growing and they're going to pull that Spider-Man contract. They'll rescind it and you'll see Spider-Man on Sony films in the Spider-Man universe. This all-female Spider-Man film is going to be a flop. But if they're smart, they wait to put that out until they get Spider-Man back. The only thing they could do to get me excited would be if they pulled Homecoming's universe and Spider-Man 4 Tobey Maguire came out. That's biased Jeff coming out, honestly. Other than that, I don't think I'll uh, be into it, but I do think they're going to do more of their own Spider-Man films. And the first one that they make, that's a complete flop and a stinker worldwide will uh, kill superhero movies for quite some time. So Spider-Man's in a precarious position. Let's hope that they um, double down on some of the classic stuff that works and give people a good time and not try to teach them a message about, well, modern day, this have Spider-Man and his black castmates as Asians. It's fine, but don't forget the characters that we all like have a certain look that leads as a white dude with uh blondish red hair who dies kill ned kill ned so let's see are we all caught up uh no we're we're not caught up just yet so okay we got a lot of ones alpha Terranima, thank you very much i'd say it'll only get worse in 2020 because of election year and olympics in japan Ooh, okay i forgot about the election year or are we going to be focused on the actual culture war of regular society? It's going to get ugly. I don't know. I don't follow enough politics right now. To, I, I, you know, the, the vote was at last month, the whole prime, not the primaries, this, the November election. That was a big deal that came and went thing. Things too on the internet seem to have a longer shelf life because these people just keep going on and on and on about them. You know, in 2016, when the election happened, People talked about it at Christmas for a minute, and that was it. It wasn't this long, drawn-out bitch fest about politics. You know, people, some people's families get off on it. Like, you see all these people say, it's okay to ruin your Thanksgiving dinner to talk politics. 
That is why you fuckers are going to die alone because you're unlikable. I don't care if you're gay or straight or anything in between. If you're an unlikable douchebag, people don't want to associate with you. You can have 50 cats. They don't understand English. So good for them. They can avoid your fucking terrible disposition. But you are directly responsible for the kind of company you keep and the kind of situations you get yourself in. And if you find yourself in those situations and they're problematic, um, move, remove yourself. Don't cause a problem for other people. Don't ruin their holidays. People work all year to take Christmas off, to get gifts, to enjoy it. Um, I think a lot of people are more realistic to the fact than the internet will let you know. The internet, it's funny. It used to be you'd have an avatar on the internet. Uh, your screen name in many ways is your avatar, but it's also a personality most people don't carry over into the real world. Uh, that is why safety nets exist for, on certain platforms, like a Facebook. Like, shit, that's really you. You say stupid shit, well... You're held accountable because people know who you are. I don't know about Olympics in Japan. Japan seems to be very aware of our Western stupidity, and they seem to, at least in their entertainment, avoid it. I don't consume everything that they do, but I did see that the creator of, um, what's that, Evangelion or whatever, called out Netflix because they said it would kind of like get uh, shoveled under all the uh, Netflix content. So, you know, cool for Japan. I like Japan. I don't know. Like, I'm not one of these Americans that's like, oh, Pearl Harbor and this happened and blah, blah, blah. Look, different times that you can't go on and on about it. Uh, Japan's a place I'd like to visit. Obviously, I wouldn't be welcomed with open arms. Like, I would be like, oh, man, Japanese people in America, welcome or whatever. I really don't care. I just say hey to everybody. But I'd like to go to their country. Side note. I would enjoy being at least like, you know, good seven to eight inches, maybe a foot taller than most people. I'd love to go to Japan. Like, you know, Conan O'Brien had that video about him walking through Japan. I'm about as tall as Conan O'Brien. Maybe this, I don't know how it was Conan six, five. I am with a pair of shoes. I'm probably closer to six, you know, six, six, depending on the shoes, but I would enjoy to go to Japan and walk around, see people look at me and then smile and shake their hand. Yeah. They call me a gaijin and tell me to get the hell out of there, but I'll go to, what is it? Akihabara or whatever, and get all the, the uh, electronics. Go eat some delicious food. And Japan's cool in my book. When we do a world-class bullshitters world tour, I would like to go to Japan. If some company buys us, well, nobody's going to buy us. If we find some way to go to Japan for the channel and film stuff, uh, don't worry. We're not going to pull a Logan Paul. We're not going to disrespect the country. I'll probably just ask you to take me where I can buy comic books and have a lot of fun. Um, yeah, Jubroni is right. <laughs> comic book day? No! It's garbage day. Oh, um, I'm going to do a Silent Night, Deadly Night 2. Oh, I got to find time for it because I just got confirmation that my Blu-ray with my garbage day action figures on the way. And my face lit up when I said that. I have dreamed of action figures based off shitty 80s movies. Garbage day. You know what's weird and sad? We live in a world where the garbage day guy got, has an action figure, but there's no Axel Foley. Seriously. I pay good money. If Mezco's 112th Collective did Axel Foley, the action figure, I'd spend $80 on it. I fucking love that movie. You, you know, the way to my heart, especially through the P.O. Box, is Beverly Hills Cop or Batman. or You guys know what I like. And um, I'll be going to the P.O. Box Salvador today just to make sure your stuff doesn't get resent back. And um, it'll be, you know, before I go to Chipotle. Grendel Fan 84 says it's part of their legacy initiative. Well, their legacy initiative is failing. They being Marvel pronouns, pal. And that's a reference that I don't think anyone will get. <laughs> except. So their legacy initiative is all well and good until people don't buy their comic books. Oh my God. Comic Artist Pro Secrets, what's up, EVS? Thank you for joining us here in the chat. I've had a lot of fun. You know certain days the energy is just so high and the world lends itself to just fantastic topics that you can't help but enjoy to discuss so yeah i've had uh, a fantastic time and yeah i'd love to crowdfund an actual fully action figure shit i would put in my own money to help crowdfund it i guess they look at it from a state like there's also no lethal weapon figures see you know this is where fandom and um you know business don't cross like certain things like i love james bond they make james bond collectible dolls the company that owns the rights suck so a lot of people this and that they're not buying them because they're bad products but james bond's more marketable i love beverly hills cop lethal weapon 
Die Hard. I don't think they're as marketable. I think a McLean figure would sell around Christmas because it's the best Christmas movie. Die Hard, that is. But I don't find myself uh, living in a reality where a Beverly Hills Cop piece of merchandise would be uh, very viable. Dude, there you go. Secret Rebel understood that reference. Secret Rebel got it. Is Secret Rebel the first person to get it? I believe so. Yeah, the Bruce Pritchard podcast. That is my... F- you guys want to know what I like to do when I work on the comic and stuff? I should be listening to my books that I bought, you know, to help me expand my world and clean my room. But I listen to wrestling podcasts, three specifically. What Happened When, uh, 83 Weeks with Eric Bischoff, and um, Something to Wrestle with Bruce Pritchard. If you want to know what I listen to for fun, that's it. And check it out. They're, they're good people. Dayton Pfeiffer, uh, thank you very much for your super chat. Commentary on Beverly Hills Cop? I need to. Much like Back to the Future, I feel like I'm waiting. You know what? Screw that. I will do it. Um, I'll try to find a time when Dion's available, and we'll do all three in a day. We'll do uh, like we did with Star Wars. We'll do a, like a franchise commentary, because you can get all three Beverly Hills Cop films done in one eight-hour sitting. They're only 90 minutes each, so it's not going to be too much of a, a, a time hole. But yeah, I'd love to do that. It's funny, I was about to say, I don't like to necessarily cover my favorite stuff because I want to just watch it, but I've done Star Wars multiple times, the original film here on the channel, and everybody wants to talk about that movie. It's one of my favorites. I have a million and one things to say about it, so yeah, uh, we'll do a Beverly Hills Cop one. We'll just make sure Dion's available. Count that in for a 2019, um, maybe we'll do it in Black History Month to be sarcastic. Actually, we want to do some black exploitation flicks, so be on the lookout for that too. Uh, people are loving that EVS is here. Uh, everyone's like EVS, hey, yeah, the dude does get around. Uh, it was weird not having him on the high council last night, man. Uh, like last week, it was just the two of us for a good chunk, and you know we clicked. We got a million things to talk about, but don't worry, um, he'll be back next week. The high council's here on world class bullshitters, so we're gonna have a lot of fun. We'll be talking about stuff. We'll be figuring out our holiday schedule, too. Who knows? Good morning pop culture may take a little bit of a hiatus around the holidays, but I might do a nighttime show because people are off school, people are off work, but you also want to sleep in. So why take that away from you guys? Why not have some fun? So I had a... What was air says, John McLean dressed up as Turbo Man with a Santa hat and beard. Best Christmas toy ever. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would buy that. I'd buy 10 of them. Shit. If you were a certain level patron, I would be mailing you those for Christmas. Every one. People would just be like, hey, what I get in the mail? Oh my God, it's John McClane with the Turbo Man suit and Santa hat and beer. Pitch me your craziest Christmas toy concoctions, guys, based on movies, TV shows, or comic books. Let's have some laughs. Uh, while we while I wait for that, though, I did have a few other topics I wanted to cover. This show might run a little long. Heaven forbid we have some extra fun in the morning. Um, So real quick, let's talk about Star Wars. So there is a Star Wars comic. Well, we're not going to really get into this too, too much. But there's an interesting article floating around. Wait, hold on. Conan the Barbarian is joining Marvel's Avengers? Is this real? For a guy that doesn't really like Conan the Barbarian, I seem to get excited about Conan the Barbarian. Uh, we had a super chat roll in from our friend Thanos EVS. I shall spare you if you give me apple pie. Yeah, I can give you apple pie. We have a pumpkin pie, a leftover one. Well, not leftover. We just bought it because it was on sale from Frisch's. And for the folks out there, if you live in the Midwestern region, if you're by a Frisch's, uh, their pumpkin pie is second to none. I, You will give me the most um, luxurious bakery in the world. I will, uh, you know. I'll give you a Frisch's pumpkin pie, and I'll show you that Frisch's pumpkin pie is the uh, the best. So let's see. What else do we got? Conan the Barbarian in Avengers. I don't uh, I don't know what to say about that. It's kind of a weird a weird pitch, you know, odd flex, but okay. Where do we go? That is not it. Gotta love live radio, folks. So Conan the Barbarian is joining Conan the Barbarian is joining the Avengers. Oh man! Okay, now look at Cecil may joke about stuff all the time, but when he talks about the art falling apart at Marvel, uh, he is right. When you look at this, so I'm going to show you guys something. This is embarrassing. 
and uh, and I'm not. This isn't hyperbole. So when I think of Conan the Barbarian artwork, I think of John Buscema. I think of all these classic guys, Ernie Chan. I think of this powerful imagery. This is what 2018's version of powerful imagery is. That is the ugliest Conan the Barbarian cover I've ever seen. Ugh. We brought back bad comic book art, folks. We bought, brought back bad comic book art, folks. Uh, Say so if SH Figures did an Axel Foley figure, would he get them? I'd buy a couple of them. I'm not joking. Any company that made officially licensed... Any company that made a bootleg one that was good enough, I'd buy like two of them. One to keep in the box, one to put up. Uh, Universe, if you're listening, send me an Axel Foley figure. Hot Toys. That's who I'd want to make it. Hot Toys. That'd be amazing. Uh, an EVS action figure with a mini mini fig of Rose Tico that can go in his Kung Fu grip hand. I'd buy it. I'll review it on the channel. We'll even Ethan, I'll even put that music you love so much on it. There we go. <laughs> Uh, worse art than the Conan cartoon. Well, I put different standards on uh, animation because it's meant to move. So the simplicity of it, like if you look at the filmation stuff for He-Man, the line art's very simplistic because it has to move and do this and that. But for a static image, you know, I expect a little more. So Conan's uh, about to be, er, become public domain. Ooh. Maybe I should. Nah, I'm not going to do a Conan the Barbarian cartoon or comic book. I don't have the time for that. But here's all I wanted to show you. So when you type in Conan the Barbarian, you get a lot. You get much better artwork. Yeah, you get the film with Arnold Schwarzenegger, but you also get much better artwork. And now I'm not going to show you Frank Frazetta because that's not really a fair comparison. I mean, Frank Frazetta is a master or was a master. Let's show you something from Marvel though. Uh, is this Buscema? But here's like. I guess this is what I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make a big point with all of this. Give me a second to get this image to load. It's kind of a big image. Much like society has lowered the bar, the entry in terms of quality and stuff like that, it's kind of lowered on every level. You know, well, everyone has access to make a movie. Awesome. Well, that doesn't mean every movie's great. Well, everyone has access to do this and do that. Well, okay. But here's what Conan the Barbarian used to look like. This was like a standard issue cover for these Marvel magazines. These are awesome. These are cool. This is powerful imagery, at least to me. I'm enjoying the shit out of this. I look at New Conan, it's just like, eh, what is that? <laughs> uh, Barry Windsor Smith did great art on Conan in the 80s. I'm sure, I, I know who Barry Windsor Smith is, not personally. I've seen his, he did some Marvel stuff, or I think he drew kind of like Jack Kirby. But, uh, you know, that was his style he was trying to draw like. But yeah, these Savage Sword of Conan books are cool, and I've picked up a couple of them in recent years, and they're fun reads. Um, that's what I like. Uh, let's see. Cyber Frog and Salamandroid action figures, please. Yeah, uh, they need to go in this office. They really do. Uh, EVS, remind me to get one of your chess piece sets. I'll add that to my collection. Limited time stuff. Well-drawn women is a lost art. Yeah, I don't know why... I guess part of it, too, is, oh, they don't want to show them in peril, or it's offensive, or this or that. Art's art. Enjoy it. If it's offensive, cool. If it's not, cool. Whatever. I don't know how it sells. Apparently, it doesn't sell. Uh, how about good versus bad artwork segment? Well, I, Hernandez, uh, you just got one. Modern Conan cover versus this classic Conan cover. And the beautiful part about this image is I can zoom in, and you can see... The detail. I mean, look at that witch. That lady's scary. That's. I bet you more time was spent on this witch than the entire cover from the new stuff. And who's Norm? Is it Ed Norm that was the artist? I think he did some Marvel um, paperback covers for Marvel. Honestly, why would I say for Marvel? For Marvel. But yeah, I, I enjoy. You know, this is fun to look at. There's a lot going on. Now, I don't expect every panel to look like this because, quite frankly, when you get to those Alex Ross books, much like. Um, What's that one? Mar not Marvels. Well, Marvels or the one that Mark Wade wrote. Those books, after a while, um, I don't know. There's something about it. I feel like it gets lost. When every panel looks like that, the story kind of gets lost in translation, if that makes sense. Some more simplistic stuff or just some powerful line art. I like that as my interior, and I like these as the covers. And I, and I don't like when you'll get like a splash page that's done differently than the other art. It, it just throws it off for me. 
It seems fanfics these days are better than multi-million dollar movies. See the comparison. Well, yeah, we talked about this last night too. We were talking about the high council and this and that. It's about the passion behind it. When you have passion, when you have energy, when you want to talk about these things uh, to no end, you will do it better. You will do it well. I could shit on Marvel all day, but if down the road they gave me the opportunity to draw Spider-Man <clears throat> professionally, I'd be like, oh my God, this is it. And I would be passionate about it and I would give it the give it my all. And people would be able to pick up on that because I'd pull out all the stops. <laughs> so let's close out talking about Star Wars real quick. So this article popped up this morning. Mark Hamill, episode nine secrecy is like being in a CIA, in the CIA, says Mark Hamill. So I'm not going to read you the entire thing, but this is a good way to end the show. End it with a laugh. This has been a fantastic, this has been the best Good Morning Pop Culture quite a while. Maybe it's because I had more sleep. Maybe it's because there's a rant. I don't know, but it's been a fantastic show. So EVS approves. Everybody else approves. We're good to go. So it's no secret that the secrets of Star Wars must be kept secret for, for fear of the secrets secreting and ruining everything, especially the secrets. That's a sentence. But the secrecy around Star Wars has gotten even more extreme than you might realize. There are criminals in moves. There are, criminal, there are criminals in movies that get transferred between prisons that don't have as much security as the secrets of Star Wars. Star Wars Saga star Mark Hamill has been around since the beginning of the franchise, and it should come to no surprise that the secrecy of the surrounding... And so, God, it, it just throws me off. Anyway, Mark Hamill talked to Entertainment Weekly. You know how it is these days. Every time you sign NDAs, I remember back when I read the first Star Wars script, I was like, wow, that's the goofiest thing I've ever read. I gave it to my best friend to read, and I said, what do you think of it? And he said, it's really wild. It's crazy. Can I give it to Meredith? Sure, go ahead. It went around all of my friends. Of course, back then, nobody cared. Nowadays, it's all like we're all working for the secret deep state government organization. It's like being in the CIA. They're going to send rewrites over to Prague on this dark red <laughs> paper that gives you a headache to read. We've seen the dark red pages of the Star Wars script before. Oh, man, I didn't realize. I thought that was a joke. Huh. That'd be a terrible thing to read. And then this is what Mark Hamill goes on to say. They're going to fly the rewrites over with somebody from the company. They're going to come and give it to me and wait for me to read it before I give it back. So no pressure. You can't even keep it overnight. But that's the way it is now with J.J. Abrams back behind the camera. And this <laughs> God, I can't believe that this is the kind of shit that goes on. You know, folks, we always talk about the narrative of these entertainment properties. They can tell you, oh, man, the stories are so secret. This is so this. This is so that. But the stories suck. They drop the ball so many times. So all the secrecy in the world, all the mystery box garbage, they still cannot get it right. But when everybody and their mom could read Star Wars for free, they made a movie that changed the world. Grindle fan 84 thank you very much. We at Comics Elite have our own Conan number one exclusive by Lucio Perillo coming out in January when he will be on our store doing autographs and sketches. <laughs> I, I, I'm really jealous that your comic book store gets that and mine doesn't. Because I would go, if you guys weren't 90 miles from me, that's the kind of shit I'd go to do for fun. It's like, well, I'm going to go meet this artist and get an autograph and shoot the shit. Uh, maybe one day, Rock and Rooster. Maybe one day. Hammer of Crom, the rant dude. You need to get more fired up more often. I will get, you guys want me to get fired up? Send me shit to rant about. Help me out. Remember, my schedule's a little weird. I stay up late to do work, and then I get up real early to do this show. So I find stuff the night before that I think will work for a show. But if you want the rants, send me the most stupid shit. If I wake up to tweets and stuff in my inbox about you know garbage to rant about, I'll probably get up kind of testy, and I'll rant about it. So the power is yours to close out our show with another Captain Planet reference. Send me stuff. Send me stuff to rant about. Piss me off, and I will get pissed off, and we will rant and rave every morning on Good Morning Pop Culture. We'll call it a different show, The Morning Rant with Jeff Hicks. You know, back when the channel was fairly new, I tried to do a thing called Monday Morning Rants, and it worked to a degree. But Good Morning Pop Culture is a much more encompassing title, and people like it a lot more. So let me see where we're at. Uh, yeah, this has been an awesome chat, guys. You... You know, the show works both ways. 
I got stuff to rant about, but you guys got the excellent questions. So today, uh, pat on the back to everybody who was here. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Excuse me. We also had Coconut Jeff in the chat. So Coconut Jeff, thank you for making my uh, day. <laughs> By your outrage combined, I am Captain Bullshit. There we go. I'm screenshotting that. That is my new catchphrase. That is my new fucking catchphrase. I think I'm going to put... I, oh, that'll be our one of our first t-shirts. I'll do the art. I'll get it professionally colored. By your by your outrage combined, I am Captain Bullshit. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Uh, Logan Michael, thanks for the stream. Have a good one. Logan Michael, you have a better one, my friend. Uh, hopefully you're uh, free from all your responsibilities and can have a nice Christmas break soon. And uh, by the way, a couple people out there have been contacting me about the Nintendo friend code thing. So we're going to do some channel Super Smash Brothers in the future. I got the streaming capabilities. We got the internet connection to do it with all of you out there. Let's have some fun. Let's make that happen. Let's do something different. Maybe we'll have a tournament. You know, in my mind, I'm training for this hypothetical tournament. I Life is crazy. You know, a year ago, I didn't know where I'd be, and now I'm here. And a year from now, I'm sure I'll be somewhere even better. But couldn't imagine going to, like, Evo or something and being like, I'm going to play Smash Brothers and then, you know, win or something crazy like that. I have a lot of fun with it. Um, I'm breaking it down analytically in a little bit of time I do have to play it. And uh, it's a fantastic game. Second best of the year. Spider-Man, Smash Brothers, then Red Dead. Sorry, Red Dead. You lost my attention. I really have no intention of going back to play it. Uh, let's see. I have an idea for another parody comic. It involves SJWs and ponies. Take it and run with the idea. Captain Bullshit. Make that a comic, too. I love you guys' ideas. Now, um, I do like that concept. My next comic is kind of locked in. But I do have more parody things down the road. So make sure that, you know what, I'll make sure that I take a screenshot so I don't forget that. Um, comics are fun. They are time consuming. I don't think people understand how sometimes even basic pages can take you a lot of hours. EVS will attest to that. But um, I'm having a great time with Stealing Solo, and I can't wait for you guys to check it out. Uh, Jeff, have you unlocked Incineroar yet? I have not. The last character I unlocked was... I don't know. I unlocked quite a few yesterday because I had dinner and then I had a little break before the high counts, and I thought, oh, I had dinner, then I finished my page for Stealing Solo, and then I had a break. So for like 90 minutes, I played Smash Brothers, and I might take a break between rendering this show and uploading it, like do it at the same time, and play again. But no, Incineroar has not been locked or unlocked. I really want to play as Solid Snake, one of my favorite video game characters, but I, I feel like the game's going to make me unlock him last. I just I got Ryu and I played as Ryu and Ryu sucks. I can't I can't do it. Samus is my favorite character. Honestly, it would be Link, but they took away the hook shot. I like the grapple from a distance. I think that's what's selling me on Samus. That and the um, that charge blast. I'm figuring it out how to drop from the sky and exactly where to shoot it and the timing. It's more in depth than you believe. Get Incineroar for pro wrestling fun. I love to think he's based on the Rock. Well, I'm going to be the best judge of that, Super Smash Brothers candidates, and as soon as I unlock him, I will play him, and I will let you know if I think he's like The Rock. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be awesome. Um, have you ever heard of a movie called Hot to Trot? I highly recommend that for Dion. <laughs> Hot to Trot, okay. I was thinking of that 70s show. Uh, it was like Hot to Trot, nice and easy and good and plenty. Those were the ladies that Fez, Hyde, and Kelso talked to over the CB radio. And they get there, and they talk to these old ladies, and then they leave Fez, and it turns out they're hot women, and Fez, you know, hangs out with them. Uh, Jeff, I'm chock full of ideas for you to draw to get out there. Make yourself known and show the companies uh, that you shame what they point out and why every single day. We can talk, man. I, uh, I don't have any time for it coming up, but, you know, I don't think you're going to leave anytime soon, Gamepad 31 Live. So... We're buddies. We hang out on Good Morning Pop Culture. We'll talk. <laughs> oh, let's see. Ryu is ass. I'm killing it with Zelda and Inkling Girl. Guess I'm woke and respect Whammon. Hey, I play a Samus. Samus is the first lady of Nintendo. But nobody talks about that. See, I like Samus. Samus has always been fine. Good characters, you know, supersede their gender. Samus, good character. Cool, unique. Awesome powers, cool costume. Boobs, whatever. I don't like zero suit Samus because she's just too fast. But regular Samus kicks ass. 
<laughs> Everybody wants me to make billions off the next Stealing Solo style comic. Uh, guys, once we get Stealing Solo, we'll talk. Uh, once that's all over and done. But like I said, for those that joined us late, I got my early bird certificates back from the printer. So I have a giant crate of these things. I'm waiting on my envelopes to show up. And then I will fill the envelope, figure out how to print. If anyone's got um, a tip on how to use printing labels from my Indiegogo thing, let me know. Because I have to send out like almost 1,400 of these. And I'm not handwriting 1,400 uh, addresses. No. But if somebody can help me with the program or whatever I need to do to print shipping labels, I'll love you forever. Actually, not even shipping labels. Just address labels. Basic address labels. I'd appreciate the shit out of that. You'll be saving me time, and you'll get all your... The thing is, if somebody can show me how to do that, I can get all these enveloped in, like, a day. I can just spend a whole day watching TV, licking envelopes. Oh, God, I hate licking envelope shit. I better get the self-adhesive kind. I can't... No. I'm glad I said that out loud. But we'll get those shipped out. Uh, for the first taste of outrage, look up the tr revisionist Brianna Wu tried to do saying Samus is trans. I've heard her name before. I don't know what she's about, but I know she's wrong. So there we go. Uh, let's see. On 4chan and other places, there's a graphic which tells characters order to uh, order to one unlock. Oh, okay. I'll look that up, Super Smash for this candidate. So, <laughs> Harrison Ford, don't steal me again. I can't promise anything there, Harrison. Zebra printer and bartender. I guess those are the programs to use for the, sh the labels. Microsoft Word and Labels Templates Pro. I'm, I'm going to take a screenshot of everything right now. I'm going to see what the easiest one is. $5 extra for handwritten. I'll tell you guys this. For those who did back it at the higher level for the uh, JJ's Mystery Box, you do get a handwritten note as a thank you. So um, I am going that route. Then again, I don't know. You can send all your envelopes to China and have them licked by kids for significant savings as compared to doing it here in the U.S. <laughs> That's a ri I might try it, guys, if we can only get it back by Christmas. Back by Christmas. <laughs> so, guys, it is 10 o'clock. It means it's time to stop Good Morning Pop Culture. This show has been awesome. I don't care what anyone says. I had the most fun doing this. You see, some days I'm tired, some days I'm not. Today was a good day, to quote Ice Cube. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you for joining me here in the morning. Now, tonight, I don't know if we're recording our Patreon content. I don't know what we're going to do, but uh, we're going to be working on some stuff on the channel. So you will hear back from me tomorrow next. I'll be back in the morning. So if you guys have anything great to rant about, uh, send it to me. Send it to me via email, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. You guys know how to contact the show. And I will rant about it. I will rave about it. And I will have a good time. So uh, I'll be back tomorrow with that. So be on the lookout for your early bird certificates. I will let you know when I ship them out. I'll post a thing on Indiegogo. That'll be the first physical, tangible thing you get from me. And then uh, next year, you'll be getting a book in the mail. And we will continue to do that process until the end of time. So thank you to everybody who uh, has backed World Class Bullshitters. Make sure you guys hit that muff button on the way out. Pound it, lick it, smash it. I don't know what you got to do. Just give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you guys are still subscribed. Uh, YouTube has been messing around with people, but we're going to be here no matter what. So, uh, quick shout out to our buddy, August for President. Happy birthday to you, my friend. And uh, I'll be back later with more. So, have a great day. Be excellent to each other. And uh, see you on the other side, Ray. <laughs>